Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us once again tonight for another fantastic Saints game day. I am the one and only, you've seen me before, you'll see me again, Daniil, also known as Betters McGee, and we also have the one and only as well. Yes, hello. Dan Banner here, as also known as Mr. Danner, is here, ready to join you here on this game day broadcast for Valentine's Day evening. Ooh. And we've got lots of red, <laughs> to say the least, here in our schedule today as we have two Academy titles alongside one Varsity one, with there being also two Call of Duty games mm -hmm. and one Valorant matchup. So plenty of action here. And I guess we could kind of say we have a little bit of a date with Cumberland University <laughs> and Northwood's kind of third wheel and on us here. So uh, I like that. Especially since it's three games, there's technically three yeah. wheels. They would be the third wheel after all, since we got two with the main ones. Absolutely. Always a pleasure with up against Northwood, regardless of what it's mm -hmm. in as well. So no shot against them nonetheless. But uh, yeah, Cumberland University, it's probably going to be one of the first matches that we do see today. We have For a few sure. from starting at seven o'clock. Um, in Valorant action, Academy, Valorant, I don't know what is in the water over there, but they always manage to go to game three mm -hmm. with at least like 25 some odd rounds. It feels like they always seem to go all the way to, their, to the end with those games. It's never a clean 2-0 uh, or, th or um, anything. If it is a game three, like no early rounds to say the least exactly and this might be my academy bias talking as a coach myself i love academy games they are always so so exciting so enticing and you really feel the energy because varsity yeah you know they win all the time you know uh, but academy not <laughs> oh, to say we never win are we <laughs> <laughs> exactly you know but sometimes you get tired of seeing those those stops and the saints are so dominant in every game they play but academy is always exciting and i love to see what they're doing and when you said you don't know what's going on in the water with academy i thought you mentioned the i thought you were going to talk about the lineup uh for valorant because i know that there's basically a huge roster we have now mm -hmm. there's basically two sub teams within the one giant team so honestly i don't even really know who we are going to have playing tonight uh but regardless it's going to be an interesting match to say the very least absolutely i know academy maybe Coming off the high, a little bit of just watching our varsity roster mm -hmm. in the VCT challenge. They were, actually. <laughs> they did just win in 2-0 fashion. Something about donkeys, I have no idea. In VCT, <laughs> the, the teams could be named whatever they want. But however, the loser's bracket run is still alive mm -hmm. there. And of course, Academy Valorant looking up to them, seeing the, the W there, looking to translate that on over here to uh, Cumberland. And if I recall correctly... Oh, no, this is for Call of Duty. I'll get to Call of Duty in a second. But, um, Cumberland is no slouch, to say the least. Mm -hmm. here. We don't hear about them too, too often, but it seems like record-wise they're doing pretty solid. Yeah, I haven't seen that record yet myself, but if you're saying they're good, I believe you, okay? <laughs> you love looking through those records, crunching those numbers, and every team that we play against in these leagues are always so, so talented. Again, especially since we're playing in NACE for uh, Valorant and Call of Duty tonight, those leagues always bring the best of the best. CCL, of course, always bring the best, too. We're playing oh, yeah. against Northwood, like you mentioned. Always an exciting team to play against. Yeah, normally when we talk about CCL Call of Duty, we end up talking about varsity. But no, it is mm -hmm. going to be Academy taking the lead um, in this one, a different division, if I do recall correctly. But CCL Open, I believe. Yeah, in, but you're going up against Northwood. I don't <laughs> care which division this is. It's going to be a tough battle. And, of course, that broadcast is going to be actually brought to you by the students in the... Uh, Esports Administration and Entrepreneurship Program. Say that five times fast. <laughs> um, guys, that a class project of those students have actually been uh, tasked with, or rather they chose the task of being able to cover every single Ooh. Academy Call of Duty game. So if you've noticed that things look a little bit different, sound a little bit different, that is the... Uh, the or the students at hand. I don't say that as a warning. I mean, that's, that's as a good thing, to say the least. So that should be starting momentarily here. As we actually have some of the roster here for the two teams that we're probably going to see up first here. On the side of Northwood, we have Crazy Nilla. Does that tickle me, Tweety? Tickle me, tickle tweety. Me tweety. And wave sigh. On the side that. of Northwood, and now, so we can see for the Saints, we have quite a few people there. Yeah, we have Siri, uh, Factions, GMG, Pieces, and Rare. I believe uh, Siri's taking more of a managerial role this time around, so those other players are going to be the ones most likely starting us off tonight. Which I find very, very interesting, because I do believe we've seen GMG 
also participating on varsity at one point or another, whether it was in NACE or whether it was in uh, CCL. I cannot quite remember, but everybody on that roster can absolutely have their day and absolutely pop off. So going to be looking forward to seeing that one in a moment's time. But the one game that I did not get the opportunity to really talk about just yet is the varsity matchup that we are going to have a mm-hmm. little bit later, 8.30, going up against Cumberland University, of course, but this one is for a nice Star League action. And both of these teams, if I do recall correctly on the records, not only are they both 2-0, neither of them have dropped a map yet. So <laughs> someone's having that record broken today. But if it's anything like we've saw in the past here, mm-hmm. Is it bad that I still say that this is probably a Saints 3-0? <laughs> um, I, probably not, again, with the record that our team has, especially in Call of Duty. This isn't the first perfect season our team has had, mm-hmm. um, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, I know, in fact, even just last semester, or even last year, several perfect runs throughout their seasons. Eventually, I think they ended up getting broken, but... It's still the playoffs, up, at least, though, for more it to finally less. happen. Yeah, so our, our Call of Duty team is strong. Very strong, scarily strong, dare I say. So um, having them go up against this team tonight, it really can go either way. But betting against the Saints, you're in good hands. Yeah, I, I feel relatively confident to say the least. Now, here's the thing, though. I say this pretty much every time I'm on the desk, though, and even to some of the people when I'm talking about the games. It's like, yes, we're, we're here on the Saints Gaming CA channel. It's the home, home team here. Mm-hmm. But as a producer for uh, for esports, I want to see a back and forth match. I oh, want it yeah. to go all the way. I want to see a challenge, and maybe Cumberland uh, Varsity could be that challenge here that we just kind of swept under the radar. As we do take a look, Cumberland Cod University. That's going to be honored to see Crayon Calamity Jay Z, uh, Freak to Shiesty, and Camp on the side of Cumberland. Some sort of combination of the four of them will be there, of course, coached by Andrew, Andrew Elk. Elk. Cool name. <laughs> Absolutely. And then, of course, on our side, why don't you take it away real quick? Of Please. course. We have the one and only Priestley, Zarin, Brandon, KBZ, and Release. You've seen them before. You're going to see them again. And they're going to look to bring absolute hell in this match tonight against Cumberland. 100%. You may notice, that, like, when we actually get into the game itself, the tags might be a little bit different. I believe for Laz, um, it goes by Enslaya or something now. Enslaya. If I recall, if Correct. I recall correctly. But um, nonetheless, it's a lot of names that we know. It's uh, a lot of familiar faces. And we know, it's just even after watching them yesterday, I worry about grenade usage. <laughs> Is something crazy happened with grenades? We saw probably four team kills yesterday oh. from the Saints just blowing each other up with grenades. <laughs> but I think if, at one point it just became more for the memes gotcha. compared to an actual strategic fault. The first one was maybe an oopsie. Mm-hmm. But after that, it seemed like uh, <laughs> everybody was getting involved. Poor Brandon got first hit with the first two. Or no, he was a culprit <laughs> in the first two. But... Nonetheless, those grenades were also finding opponent kills. So I guess I'm typing worth in all chat. In that oh, 100%. Trait. Yeah. <laughs> if you know anything about a Call of Duty team, you know that they really do love to have a good time in and outside of the game. Uh, they're always looking to bring smiles to the people, uh, especially when they're on the stage. You can, they always play to the crowd, cheering on. It's always fun. Love it when they're on the stage. It's always a pleasure to have them around. But that's about three games covered for tonight, mm. going through the stats and everything. Before we throw it to a break, you want to bring it to me about the any stats you might be expecting or um, score lines, predictions? Huh. going to touch on one thing, and then I'll go into predictions for, for uh, sure. real quick. But do you want to also give a quick thank you because there's actually quite a few people in the nexus watching live so this is what i'd love to see we've been slowly but surely not only trying to get the broadcast products here as he's giving ca as polished and ready as possible but but slowly but surely trying to get this environment with the nexus and learning the equipment that we have exactly and over the last couple of days it's been really cool seeing everybody stop by and watch especially with the land yeah if you're a student here even if you're not a student here if you know how to get here you're more than welcome to come down to the nexus during the streams during the games and watching the crowd we'd love to have you there's no entry fee not yet watch it's just (laughs) if you want to actually play on one of the machines and you're not the student that's where the price comes in but if you're a student it's free anyway so you might as well if you're close and want to see the action live but in terms of predictions so let's go down the list here i'm going to start off at the top here Mm -hmm. with um 
our Academy squad going up against Northwood University. I am going to say 3-1 to Northwood. Northwood, I for whatever that. reason, to me, just after the past couple of years that we've gotten the opportunity to compete against them, mm-hmm. have always been one of those household names for like top programs. Granted, from what I understand, their infrastructure kind of switched up a little bit. So how strong is that going to still be? We'll have to see. But I still hold them in high regard. I'm thinking 3-1. Mm-hmm. I, I might take it a little bit differently. I'm going to say 3-0, um, but it's going to be a very close 3-0. Either way, it could be 3-0 for the academy. If you like you're saying it's true, if maybe the fo- focus has changed um, for the school, maybe if they're pulling back on the, you know, the, the, the push that they're putting into their esports. If that's pull, if that's changed, then maybe academy does have a chance to kind of show us a little bit more of what they're made of than usual. Uh, but if that's not the case, then, of course, Northwood, even if it is the case, still, I still think Northwood is a very strong team, um, and they, there's a reason that they're feared. There's a reason that if anybody's top 10 list, they're usually somewhere near the top. It's for a reason, and I think we're going to see that tonight. Either way, 3-0, I think it's going to be close games for either team who measures to make it. Fair enough in that regard. Now, hopping on over to Cumberland versus Academy. This is going to be your Valorant matchup, which sounds like should be starting within about two, three minutes' time. Beautiful. So we're not too far away from that one. But again, like I was saying earlier, I don't know what it is about Academy Valorant, but these matches always go to game three and mm-hmm. close to overtime. I am going to give us the edge here, winning in game three. So a 2 1 victory for us is what I am thinking, but I very well could be wrong. What do you think? I would say, yeah, maybe a 2 1, if not a 2 0 for our favor. Um, Mostly, I'm confident that we're going to take the series one way or the other, 2-0 or 2-1, mm-hmm. partially because I see the work that those teams are putting in. I have quite a few friends on the teams, both <laughs> teams of that mega academy giant squad we have, um, and I can see the amount of effort, strategy, time they're putting into it, even just maybe like an hour and a half before broadcast, I saw them. They were in this very room uh, doing strategy and uh, yeah. watching and reviewing clips, so they're putting in so much time, so much effort into making sure that they can be playing it. They're 100% at all times, so... I'd be, remi- I'd be remiss to say that they're not going to be able to make it uh, throughout this series. I'm pretty confident that they'll be able to do so. It's definitely interesting. I, I know one thing that I've noticed here in the last couple of months or so, like you think of traditional sports, you think of like, oh, you go to this school if you want to play football or mm-hmm. something along those lines. It seems like the community around here, you might come to St. Clair for something different. But it seems like you dabble in with Valorant at some point or another. <laughs> I don't understand what is in the water to make that happen. It's an but I know I'm um, taking a peek at the stage. I know Valorant's like rather popular and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But even looking up on the stage, I think we have Storm. Where we yeah. Remember Storm from the uh, Omega, Omega Striker Strikers. side of things. And TFT. Last and he bit. wanted to join my team as well. <laughs> I mean, he had a run of giving, I think it was, it was Jesse, who's got the record right now for playing on over his collegiate lifetime. On three separate teams. I think he's already beat that, then. Somebody's... Jason's already beat that? Uh, if we count... Do, are we counting just here? Just here. Okay, well, just here, I think he's still already beat that. Because he's played on TFT, Omega Strikers, now he's playing on Valorant. I guess if I he's did... it so far. Make it, if I made him an official member of my team, he was kind of a trial, then he would have had four. <laughs> um, but he didn't put in enough work, I'd say, to be put on it. You know, his Grand Blue's not quite up there yet. Well, how the heck do you put in enough work to be so competitively viable in four titles? I have a hard time <laughs> even getting close to one. Like, huh? <laughs> but it just goes to show the absolute... Um, prowess of our For sure. uh, community and of our players here just the fact they're so gifted in multiple titles mm-hmm. and tying jesse's old record is kind of funny <laughs> but um going back to the prediction side of things so then we hop on over to or we kind of, kind of touched on it already so it'll be really quick but mm-hmm. i think we were safe to say that off of the momentum that uh, varsity call of duty has been having that three o's are probably on the board yeah i think it'd still be um maybe not close all the way through but i think we might have some really close calls maybe in search and destroy because that seems to be where our team kind of struggles the most mm. um I also it's it's a kind of a toss-up whether or not they stomp on hard point or if they get stomped it, it really is hard to say for sure it's either a stomp stomp or the closest game you've ever seen in your life. Uh, so <laughs> it's, it's it's stressful watching them play hardpoint on that game one. But I think that if that game isn't uh, a nail biter, then I think the series is going to be pretty comfortable for them. And one thing I also do curiously wonder as we get into the game, like talking to Coach Zarin a little bit yesterday, because I saw mm-hmm. the maps and it's like, hey, there's no terminal. There's oh like, really? There's no maps here that I recognize. Like what happens? <laughs> and it's like, oh. Um, we're confident and we want to practice our other maps. 
Hmm. Like, thanks. Makes sense. All right. Good, good on you. And to be fair, they pretty well crushed it. So mm -hmm. it's nice to see that it's not just a, a map specific thing. And I wonder if we're going to see something similar similarly to that come out today as we do have of course the game day action right around the corner here it looks like we're going to start off on icebox which how the heck did icebox get first pick that's really weird <laughs> but uh Cumberland university versus st Clair in academy valorant is going to be right around the corner of course with this game day format there is the opportunity that multiple matches will be going down at the same time if you specifically want to tune in to one of them when i'm like hard focus in on call of duty or hard focus in on valorant and don't want to deal with all the switching exclamation mark streams in the twitch chat will bring up all of the links to each respective match we're going to be here trying to catch the best little bits of everything but if you want to specifically watch one matchup make sure you do that so you are um watching the, same, the match you want completely uninterrupted of course this valorant matchup is going to be on saints academy ca for sure, and we do have, like I said, we have a huge roster these days with Academy, but on our lineup for today, we have Storm, Lakairu, Dean, Commodus, and Spectre. Uh, two of those members you may have seen on the broadcast before, Storm yep. and Lakairu, so um, familiar faces, multi-talented people, but they're going to show us their biggest talent tonight, and that's going to be winning Valorant games, hopefully. Yeah, it does look like the computer actually took a little bit long to load here, <laughs> as it... Uh, completely whiffed on the pistol rounds, but we know St. Clair, Valorant, we know pistol rounds don't usually go in our favor anyway. No, so it is going to end up dropping down to St. Clair beyond the um, back foot to start things off here. Granted, attacking on Icebox is a little bit awkward, so fair enough in that regard. The Eagle Corner is going to keep it met with three of them. That Ooh. is definitely in for a rough time as three Saints up the board nice and quick. Got some momentum stopper for sure. Spectre is able to find one, especially in these uh, rounds after you lose pistol. Any pickoff you find is valuable. They're back to even gonna get broken the plan. So it's extra catch. Oh, but the wall bang is actually gonna put him down. Such de demonstrating such skilled game knowledge. Cumberland University is looking to make this a stomp for the first two, and they have a success. But again, Saints managing to pick up three kills. Um, obviously, they wanted to win the round, but they're not gonna complain about getting those pickoffs when you know they came off the loss of the pistol round. Yeah, that initially looked like it was just gonna be. Um, five saints up five saints down but mm -hmm. they did end up racking some havoc doing a little bit of damage here to kind of at least bring that within reason bring that within uh or bring that round close and at least do a little economic damage so not bad in its own right here but now two on the board saints in theory should be able to buy a little bit but let's see i'm not going to choose which spot yet i'm going to wait on the soda dart and see where to go from here Absolutely, the Saints are going for a little bit more of a reserved approach. It's not going to go out in their favor, though. Wallbang headshot is going to take out Dean in the first few yeah. seconds of this round. Now, the Saints are in a little bit of a scramble. They're leaving the spike behind. They don't want to lose it behind enemy lines. But we're going to be sending two over to B, one watching mid, and one watching A site now, or at least the exit to it. Storm, see if you can find any pickoffs. He's about to lose his life for it. Going down to 5 HP, him and Lakairu are going to be doing their best to push it through. Storm is able to find Find Cluey, the one who did all that damage to him. Look, Kyrie's gonna go down. Storm knows he's not going to risk his life for that. Considering it's such a small HP pool, Storm is gonna be chasing him down. But that gives the Saints an opportunity to rotate over to A side. They are able to get the confirmation that some people have at the very least rotated, so they're gonna get the confidence to push up a little bit. Spectre's gonna do a little bit more information gathering with the Echo Dart, see if he can find any stragglers pushing up. Yes, right, so they're gonna be creeping now towards that A site, but even still, a couple of members of the Saints not quite fully committed on this. But the, on the defensive side of things, Cumberland is making their way over. So Saints left. might be in a position where they have to kind of move a little bit quickly. Dominus is going to be the first casualty Spike here in this push. A. Just gets to take down the Spectre. Good shot to the smoke, but immediately trading out, which is just I going to leave it all up the storm to try and find three. He knows where they are, but I don't care how good you are. Your gun can't be in three places at once. It, it's really interesting. Uh, storm probably should have died first, or I guess technically second that round, but he ended up being the last one surviving on five HP, no less. But that is going to be another round for Cumberland University. 3-0 against the Saints. I'm wondering what kind of adjustments they might want to be making around these rounds. We haven't been able to see how they're playing so far too detailed, but if I had to make any guesses, I think that they're going to try to be a little bit more committal and uh, 
they're they're losing a lot on these early pickoffs and uh, like wearing them down. If they just kind of send everybody all in, they might catch them off and might not need to sacrifice any lives to these uh, risky rotations. Let's see. But we're gonna have to see how they're gonna play this one. Yeah. It seems that they are gonna be sending everybody down A through the uh, the namesake of the map, the ice box. Pushing up, they're gonna have to make a push through the smoke wall. Gonna get the blind, but coming up from behind are two yes, members scary. from Cumberland University. Very scary. The Dean is on the high ground. The Kairu is planting, and he spots one. That's a very least information, but Cumberland University is able to find three members of the Saints in the meantime. And now it's just one left. The Kairu on the spot, but he's gonna get taken down with the quick, clean headshot from Swarm sliding through. Gonna half defuse. In fact, didn't even get the half, but doesn't matter. This is gonna be a clean defuse for Cumberland University. That was just such an awkward position for the Saints to end up being in. We saw them move into that A site with a little bit more authority. They did go pretty quickly. However, Cumberland University, almost as if they read that perfectly, their defense was actually pushing into our spawn oh, yeah. by the time that they were like getting into the A site. So by the time Saints, yeah, they made their they made their breach. They got the spike down. However, at that point, they had to deal with a flank from at least two, maybe three different sides, and you're kind of cooped up in a storage container, there is not much you can do in terms of alternative sight lines. You're popping out of one of two ways, basically, oh, and yeah. everything was completely covered. Timeout immediately gonna be used here, probably rightfully so, try and get everybody all uh, recuperated. Yeah, I feel like one of the biggest benefits of playing on Icebox with the Viper is you don't actually need to commit that many people to defend it. If you just smoke off that section of the map like they did, you you can tell when they're pushing because as long as they come through, they have to come through at some point, you have one person there, they're going to be playing slow to push through the wall. Um, mm -hmm. They're going to have enough time to have rotations come through if you need them. So, yeah, it really makes it think twice. Exactly. It forces the attackers to play it patiently, even if there's no one behind it. Yeah. They have enough time to kind of retaliate. The scariest thing is the unknown. And unfortunately, behind the smokes, you have no idea whether there's uh, one person or... Five. No so problem. that's uh, definitely a rough spot to be in. Viper does a fantastic job at that, like you said. But taking a look at this defensive positioning here from Cumberland, it looks like it's a rather aggressive one. And honestly, it, they may have read this perfectly. The jet on the side of Cumberland is in a oh very my, sneaky oh position. Does end up going down, but not before two go down on the side of the Saints. But Storm manages to find a couple of nations for himself as well. Ooh. Hot Dog is going to get roasted by Combat. Takes <laughs> care of him nice and quick. And now, this is the Saints' first time, I think, on the positive end after that first initial engage. That B site, even though Cumberland were being cheeky, looks like they went to their favor, but they actually actually completely rerouted this right on over to A say R O or R W N is right there. It is going to hear the spike go down, so it does know and Commodus immediately is blindsided by the Viper there on the side of Cumberland. And now a very, very awkward duel. Saints is trying to keep themselves safe. A lot of low health bars no here. R O N on the D. Back oh nice no! Nice job from the Viper. Has the pistol out looking for the final one. Only one member left there that is going to be Spectre Feeling to try and hold this, but he's way too far away. And that is going to be Cumberland with the defuse securing the round. Yeah, that the one that's kind of ringing in my ears is is that 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 pickoff that was taken out on Storm. That really should have been his kill to take. Uh, really unfortunate. I feel like that might have uh, kind of really been the nail in the coffin for the Saints that round. But ultimately, they still have the chance to take this over economically or at least gun-wise. They're still on par more or less with Cumberland University. Although if they do lose this round, they will really be feeling it because they will have to do another cheap round. I think the Saints are going to be wanting to try to, to fairly play. speak, Let's getting play. as many pickoffs as they can to do as much economic damage as possible, because right now, Cumberland University is having a field day. They have too much money and nothing to spend it on. Kairu, oh, that flick would have been absolutely legendary if he got it, but not going to work out in his favor. Storm finding two, trying to be the uh, retribution for his team right now. Not going to opt to swing around there. Seeing if he can find any rotators. Commodus is finding RWN. Going to go for the flash to at least scare him away. But the Saints, in terms of map control, refocusing. They are looking to decide to push down A, but it might not be going in the favor because, like I mentioned, they just need one smoker to kind of wall off this entire point and force them to play slow and scared. 
going in there with guns blazing is not in your favor because just having that one person there gives them all the advantage. But with Zane's pushing up onto A, they are going to throw out some smokes of their own. And they're going to try to get there as much as possible, as fast as possible. It's going down. Now this is their chance to kind of strike. This is the only real opportunity they're going to have to make this work. Cumberland University is rotating around Storm, taking a little bit of damage there. He's going to get taken out, and that's going to be the round for Cumberland University once again. Finding the Saints rotation, it's not going to go through completely. It doesn't work out in their favor. Okay, so pop in the ult, you have that big old sniper rifle. You know what doesn't been out, like what doesn't, uh, excuse me. You know what a sniper rifle does not really care so much about? Close quarters combat. Oh yeah. <laughs> you take that A point when you're popping the ultimate, you are putting yourself at a little bit of a disadvantage. Granted, B site, like not that much better, but at least you have those one or two long sight lines that it could be a little bit more suited for. And it feels like a little bit of an ill-advised play there on the side of Sinclair Academy as they were just, unfortunately, like yeah, they were well equipped, but maybe not necessarily for the place that they were looking for. And they're going to continue to really try and force this A site. Dean's going to do a little bit of uh, pepper spray through the smoke here. Maybe get one tiny tag onto somebody, but no major damage. Oh, is. Lakaru, however, is going to take care of the bat. And now, with a rocket ready, shot. I don't think it can contact with anybody this time. Bye. And now, Dean going to be making a move as well. Looking to charge on in. Doggy is not going to find its mark. Dean finds the one. Keeps healthy. Cave gets dropped as well. This is the best opportunity now here for the Saints to get it done. Exposed. Dean gets one more. Looking for a finale. Not going to happen. And in fact, Swarm is bringing them honest here. Spectre's extremely far away. And again, the Saints are in such an awkward position. But it is actually it's gonna number work out seven there on the on the Saints, actually, going towards the B side. I was surprised that the spike was so far away, but Commodus, good timing, I guess, was not really involved with the main engage, but is going to allow the Saints to get this planted. And Storm's in a great down. spot. There it goes. There he it was is. waiting behind, knew the rotation, heard them walking, and just had that point covered down. I think this is where the Saints are kind of really shining. Maybe, maybe I'm calling it early. Okay, I think they're gonna do really well in the defense there. I feel like the way they're kind of positioning themselves and the way they're getting and adapting to these rotations are very strong once they have the spike down. But it's usually by then they only have two guys left standing. Mm. So I feel like if they're starting on the defense, they're going to be able to play this a little bit more confidently because I feel like that's what's missing right now. They don't have any anything that's reliable. Anything, if we do this, we're going to get this out of it. I feel like right now everything they're doing is an attempt to get something, but they have no real strategy on how to get things consistently. So it feels like they're playing in a... For lack of a better example, they're playing arena mode in a, in a card game. They're just kind of drafting whatever they can and making the best out of every single round instead of having something that they can rely on. Now, Kairi, though, hoping to prove me wrong, he's going to find his own, and Dean picking up a kill at the start of the round as well. Hey, it doesn't matter if the arena mode can play blue, you have a control anyway, and it's going to be RWN finding Dean nice and quick. Storm is going to get the trade, though, pretty one well immediately. So now, Akeru is going to find one more. It is all down to the one last player on the side of Cumberland to try and hold his one down. Cluey is going to get the one, but there is two, maybe three Saints not too far away. This Viper smoke going to come down from the side of Saints. Cumberland is going to lay that down. So that spike is planted. It is all up to Cluey to try to make the move versus three or opt to save the gun how do they want to do this here Boys as it's or, going to end up being the saints going in the other direction if cluey only knew but never mind it is actually going to be specter right there to cover their six and secure the round for saint Clair. the perfect opportunity now let's see what this economy ends up looking like not too much left in the tank here for Cumberland, oddly enough, after a couple rounds did not necessarily go into their favor. Saints, however, looking like they're in a rather decent position. Operator in hand here for Storm. And lots of cash flowing here between Spectre and Akeru. So, looking good going into this next round. Maybe the Saints could score a couple more on this attacking round. Absolutely. Back from my production really journey, we're going to see how they're going to start off this next round. It seems that they have this, uh, this interesting strategy where they all kind of cluster up at the front of A. 
couple of people die and then they all start scattering. Hopefully it goes a little bit differently for them this time, although maybe actually I was about to say I'm not too confident in it. Dean finding a clean headshot to start it out. Maybe this can be their opportunity to push up. They already have some high ground. Boombot's going to be going and he's already going to be able to nice. pick up a second one and he's going to get some information with that ghost form pushing up. He's going to be coming around with Hyrule's behind him. Dean's in front of him. There's not much he can do. Now Clue is on the, the, the catwalk. Jesse going to find a single save, but Dean finding a clean okay. one tap headshot on 2K. This is not going to be the ace round. I have to say it, otherwise it's not going to be possible. There it is. He has not going to get the ace quite. Storm is going to be able to get that last pickoff, but an absolutely incredibly executed round by the Saints in terms of that confidence. They brought the oomph. It was an explosive round for them, and I feel like they executed whatever they planned. They had very, very strongly. Yeah, and the Saints, sure, they lost some things, but nothing that they could not replace. So it's just going to be immediately filled right back. I thought we saw a double lop there for a moment. Okay, we're just going to think twice about that one and just opt for the Vandal instead. But now a save round looking like it's going to be coming out here from Cumberland. A couple rounds too many not going their way. Going to have to give up another one. And especially here on Icebox, where I feel like, similar to what you were mentioning earlier, where everybody just seems to be that much more comfortable strategically on the defensive side of things. Every round that you can get on this attacking side is just gravy. But it's also just absolutely beneficial and gravy there is when you can get the kill with just a sheriff. And that's going to be two down, actually. Just like that there for Cumberland. They can steal a gun. They can maybe turn this one around. But no, Saints do manage to get to. Dean is in close quarters combat here. Is going to eventually get the kill there onto the sky. Now it's all up to two on two. As that's going to be kill number two here for Cluey. Absolutely, and oh no, oh no, in the smoke cloud, Spectre, he's gonna have that true discipline. Oh, dog finds Commodus, no but way. Spectre starts to plant, heard the shot, stopped planting. He's nervous, he's scared, he's shook. That's the value you can find in not shooting somebody, no is doing way. psychological damage. They are able to find him eventually, and Cumberland University recovers with a thrifty. Absolutely brutal, and those initial picks was just so valuable. I mean, that sheriff is basically like a sniper in its own right. If you find the headshot, and Chloe's initial shot to get this down to a 4v5 kind of put the Saints to panic mode a little bit, and being able to win that round is absolutely ridiculously amazing there for Cumberland. Saints are going to be kind of kicking themselves after that one, because now, when it gets to the economy side of things, the roles have basically swapped. Uh, nobody's sitting too pretty, but uh, Cumberland much better than where they once were. Absolutely. The Saints are going to be playing on the aggressive side. They are going to need to be able to try to coordinate themselves a little bit better and try to push for a little bit more of a structured round. Dean is going to be able to get that first pick off. B is now going to be all Saints territory. They're going to be taking it over completely. Swarm looking for anything. Can not find it? Kyrie getting the off shot. Storm is going to pick up Swarm. K is going to find Storm in retaliation, however. But now it's only a matter of time before something explosive happens. They need to go for something. They need to go for something now. Okay. And now they're going to be trying to get something onto the site. Dean's going to be able to find the oh. off. Hot dog. It's going to be scary now. Looking for that beautiful wall bang kill onto Dean. But the spike is already down. Right. There's not much you can do. The Saints are running and fleeing for their lives. With that op in hand, he might be able to get a pick off, but if he does, he's probably gonna go down oh. for it. Oh. Well, he got one. He didn't go down for it. In fact, that's the Saints operator down, in fact. Smoke is gonna go up to make this Blinded. even more impossible for them. One Saints, he's remains. gonna find another one. Hot dog three. One more. Oh. <laughs> 4K. Saints, this is the absolute definition of a fear victory. Gosh, if only you could trade your pistol out and pick up another operator, how broken would that be? Hot dog would have been absolutely loaded, but um, sure, Saints managed to squeak out the rounds, but they definitely lost everything. They're buying up pretty well as much as you can get. So as we can see, like 50 bucks or 50 yeah. credits, 200 credits, not a whole heck of a lot in the tank for some of these players. Only Spectre and Dean with really anything left over. So the damage has been done at the same time Cumberland, basically within the same area. Do hear the jet knives coming out here this time from Cumberland. Storm taking care of the doggy, but where in the world is that jet just charging on forward? In fact, I think that is going to be Storm might be on a collision course with the jets if they happen to take a right instead. No, they're going to opt for that A flank. Ooh. So this is going to be deadly. Swarm could be in a beautiful position. Absolutely. Now, one for one. 
one for one, but that can really matter, especially who that one is. They just lost their sky or jet rather. That's probably one of your strongest duelists. Even the player playing that jet has proven to be deadly in this series so far. So losing that player is going to be scary. The Saints already down two now, in fact, and one of them is incredibly low HP, but almost losing another member. Saints are going to have to play a little bit more carefully. The Killjoy is going to go down to force them out. They can either just wait for this to go down or try to rotate over to B side. Either decision will have very strong implications for the rest of this yeah. round. We already have someone on the side of Cumberland University trying to catch the rotation. Left. Not going to find them through mid, but already knows that they're on B side. Going to be moving over, but there's already three. Now four people waiting for them there. Can the Saints make this happen? Bluey is right there by the one. one Turns at the wrong time though, gets blasted Spike pretty well immediately. Feet. So it is now going to be all up to Spectre here to try Ten and get forward. But thinking about it, but you have no time left oh. to get the kill. Nice one, but do they get the spike down in time? Barely. Oh. They're not going to be able to do so. Spectre so close, but not this time. I feel like there should be a rule where like Flipping the game side. should just let it happen. Like that, they got the plan. <laughs> he you still got the, the credits for planting the thing afterward, right? <laughs> well, those credits aren't going to matter as we're heading now into the second half where I'm going to see if my theory holds true. Are the Saints going to be playing more comfortably on the defensive side? As like I mentioned, it felt like whenever they were playing defense on offense, it was pretty strong. So maybe the best offense is a good defense after all, but that was going to have to wait until after the pistol round, which notoriously never goes our way. <laughs> Yeah, we did see Cumberland University on a good handful of occasions during that uh, defensive round, just straight up like charge and look for flanks and mm -hmm. like playing that attacking kind of style. So yeah, you might be on the attacking Standing side, ahead. but maybe there is a little bit of a like strategic reversal here as we see Hot Dog immediately finding the frag there on to Spectre. And it looks like it's just all falling apart there for the saves. Dropping down Hot Dog up to find one more as well. Comdus falls, which means it's all up to Storm and the Geiru to try and somehow defend this site against five. And it is definitely going to be a world of hurt for them right around the corner. Last player standing. Especially now, it's all up to Geiru. Going to find the one. But immediately Fragory back out, and sure enough, that's going to be it. Yet another pistol round for our Saints not quite going in our way. Well, hey, at least they found one, right? <laughs> they got one pick off in that pistol round. But again, you're going to be playing off the back foot in this economically deficient round. Looking at a scoreline of 9-4, to four, Saints Academy team, they have a lot of work cut out for them if they want to make a comeback in this series. Now, with this pistol round in mind, I'd be curious to see how they're going to try to play for pickoffs. Again, you're going to want to be playing for pickoffs for sure, but especially on a map as dynamic as this with so much elevation and variance in, uh, you know, plateaus, I'm curious how they're going to try playing this one to maximize their goals here. Looking to be making a beeline for B. Recognize, oh, okay, well, Storm showing me right then and there how he plans on getting so many pickoffs, and that's by being a god at the game, finding a beautiful <laughs> headshot to start off the round, but that didn't stop them from making their way onto B side. Oh, yeah, they didn't like it. But Hot Dog, if only he knew Storm is going to go down. The rest of the Saints are just patiently waiting for an opportunity. Again, going to go down for that though. Spectre and Dean peeking down the wrong alley, the wrong time, just like that in his parents. But through the smoke, trying to get the light of his life, he is going to go down for it. Lakairu ending off the round. Yeah, unfortunately, some of those long range or mid range duels with the pistols don't necessarily go in your favor at that kind of situation, especially if the opponents have some better guns in yes. So, unfortunately for St. Clair, going to be dropping down two. They should be able to buy up this time by, which it does look like it is the case, but it's going to take pretty well everything they have in the tank to get it done. But one thing I also want to give a shout out real quick before we start this round is those looking for the Academy Call of Duty game versus Northwood. That is just finally starting, and that is going to be on Saints Academy CA2. Of course, that broadcast being brought to you by entrepreneurship programs, um, students as a part of their class project. So if you be sure to take a look at some point, we'll have to tune into that one. But we will continue with Valorant for now. Oh, said, and we are continuing indeed. Dean okay. already finding too, looking to be a defensive staple for the Saints team, utilizing all the abilities to his benefit. 
say the least, he's getting those kills and he's getting everything he can from them. But Cumberland University now trying to pick up the scraps of this round. Seeing some gunfire, Kluwe's ears are clued in to the action going on there. He sees the body now confirming his suspicion that somebody's over there, but what they don't know is there's a state basically right next to them as well, looking to peer down the hallway and find them. Commodus taking down Kluwe for once and finally putting him down. It's going to be on the RWN, their sky, to try to salvage what they can from this round. If we can get at least a single pick off, I feel like you won't be too upset about the state of this round, but that's going to be a lot easier said than done. 30 and seconds Kamos left. is right there, possible collision course here with RWN if they continue forward here. Maybe RWN will get a little bit more damage. <coughs> Don finds one, is not, or he's going to find the second one actually. So keeping the Saints honest here, but they have to find a way to get the spike down extremely quickly. And Storm is Ten right seconds. in position, uh -oh. but it doesn't matter. That's going to be the 3k now in the favor of RWN, and the rest of the Saints are having a run the park. This is not what you expect to see if you're the Saints. You really felt like that was a round in your pocket, but now you're actually having to play a retake against a Sky that honestly still has a chance to take this round. They're gonna go for the defuse, but Kairu and Spectre are both watching the angle, but the silent rotation is gonna be coming through. They keep faking the defuse, but it will work out for them. Yes, oh. it will. Spectre is gonna get the kill. 1v1 of their life. Spectre is gonna take down RWN and then gonna take out the round as well. I mean, on it, mostly Valiant's effort there from RWN. There's sure. no reason that should have been as close as it was. <laughs> and if only this first initial shot for surprisingly uh, well. Care of, could Northwood have struggling the round. No one has broken double digit Some commentary being done by the esports program itself. Actually, mm -hmm. why don't we take a quick breather and let them take it away? For sure. As they go all red, nice little turn and burn from GMG. Gets caught out in the alleyway. Someone call Batman, please. Three streaks for Syrian factions, but Siri going down to Crate. Crate trying to take this high ground on the P5 rotation. Doors is back alley. Once again, out in the open, not tucked away in any buildings. That P5 in Palace was one of the hardest hills to break on. But now we have flopped into... An open alley with explosive cars everywhere, and we see Psy take full advantage of that. Didn't necessarily get a nade kill, but that environmental kill on the feet. Siri with the two piece. Looking for the three. Siri! Siri with the freaking ace, ladies and gentlemen. My goodness, if you have a question. Beautiful. Just <laughs> as we kind of cut out there, Siri was able to pick up an ace at the end of this round. Hopefully, we can see a Saint recreate the same, but very unlikely as Chloe. Standing from behind, able to find the heads of Storm and Lakairu to end out the round. 11 to 5. Saints are two mistakes away from being sent out of this first game. They're going to have to find whatever they can within themselves to fix whatever is going wrong and take this game back from the clutches. Of yeah, death. a few things to just quickly comprehend there. First, Siri, okay, you're correct. A call of I didn't beauty. even think he was playing. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely slaying right now. And it was also interesting seeing that some of the COD players are using the terrain basically like R6 and using cars as explosives. <laughs> but then, of course, on the Valorant side of things there, just so cool Common Collective is Cumberland right now. And you can tell the momentum has just been in their favor. Swarm going to start things off nice and quickly, putting the Saints on the back foot before they've even really walked into the door. Which is such a rough spot to be in, too. But Spectre is going to find the first initial shot there on to the omen hot dog and there's another one two more down saints have tried to throw this around rocket launcher not gonna find it's marked this time by the Kairu looking for the shot but he actually got the flank there from storm and now saints have stolen a couple of the guys it's all up to cluey who does secure the one but still has to deal with three saints if they can get it to position they should be able to do this even if throw guns they really are able to pull this off. We already saw what RWN was able to do in the previous round before, but if they can find even a, a, a fraction of that amount of destructive energy, then this round is still possible, but already taking a huge bit of damage there. Kluwe is in looking to be in bad shape. The spike is so far and is in the complete sight lines and control of the Saints at the very moment, but a single slip up from the Saints is left. all Chloe needs to find the opening to force the door open to steal this round. Going to opt for the high ground, recognizing that nobody has been stimping, stomping all over it. Finds Storm. Get a clean kill. That they My do. They almost oh. found Commodus, but able to get the shot and take the round for the Saints.
All right, so one time for both teams have they been able to pull off the thrifty. So kind of evens out now, and Saints are now going to be feeling it at least a little bit more positively. Granted, after the buy, the buy up, they're going to be not in a terrible position, but not a whole heck of a lot of wiggle room. But at the same time, same thing for Cumberland. They're all buying up as well, so should be in for a strong firefight. But we can see, sure, that's a little bit of a wrench into the plans there for Cumberland University. But they can very well just regroup themselves. They're only two wins away, right? So let's see what they can end up pulling off here. As Dean immediately finding one of the members, it's going to be the jet that's just going to dash away. And eventually, the, uh, Dean does go down. Just like that, the Saints are finding their footing to be shaken up. Oh, Already down to just two members left. Oh, RWN is remaining. planting, and it's just like Hyru, the last man standing for the Saints. Seeing RWN going, he's able to get the headshot, but it's not going to stop him from getting his headshot as well. 12 to 6, looking to be Saint. The scoreline Saints only half of the points of Cumberland University. And uh, just because I just remembered, I'm disappointed before you didn't say that they're cool as a Q Cumberland. You did say that. They're a cool, common, collected, but you could Bro, said, I'm yeah. supposed to be the one making the dad jokes here. What in the world? But I'm, yes. I'm practicing from now. I guess so. My goodness. Now, one thing I did just actually notice in the Twitch chat, um, the Varsity Squad is actually still yeah. in a match as well. It's not going to be covered by game day um, due to the regulations in PCT Challengers. However, it does look like somebody is able to stream it. That's going to be Knights Arena underscore A for our Varsity Squad. Squad is for Valorant is continuing the lower bracket run in PCT Challengers. So if that's something that interests you, by all means, uh, cheer on our Griffs there as Ooh. well. Spike planted. And I hope you can cheer on our Saints here remaining. as well because they're putting in so much work, but it might not be going their way. Dean against the world. 13 to 6 win. now. That's going to be the first game going the way of Cumberland University. Mm. But the Saints, I hope they were able to learn from their mistakes that they made in this first game because they still have one game left. Or if they are able to be as successful, then they have two left to really recover. Yeah, just too much bleeding happened early when uh, the Saints were on the attacking side of things. Granted, that is extremely tough to try and um, pull off, just attacking on Icebox in general. Mm -hmm. But just got a little bit too far away from them. And then a couple of members on the side of Cumberland has just absolutely popped off there. As we see both Cluey and Hot Dog, I feel like we're talking about them every single round. And with a KDA like Hot Dog 63s there, I think I understand why. 25 and eight and eight in their own right. And Cluey not far behind as well. Like that's a whole lobby of uh, <laughs> of eliminations just on one person. It's a bit insane. Yeah, it was really scary. Every time the Saints seem to be making any kind of progress, Hot Dog 63, not a very scary name, but a very scary <laughs> individual, was there with a gun to their faces and put a complete stop and shut down to any plans that the Saints had of success. Able to completely ice them out on Icebox, but hopefully they're going to heat up a little bit. We are getting closer to spring and summer, so that should help a little bit as well and make their way through to Game 2. Absolutely. And while that was happening, of course, the Academy Call of Duty game was going on. And we did see uh, Siri there frying a little bit. It looks like they're in a break between games, mm -hmm. which if it went that quickly, I am going to assume that Academy did take that that win in game number one. But I, could, I could very well be incorrect there, but we'll get the update momentarily. Maybe I'll even cheat and check the VOD myself <laughs> if I have to, but uh, <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll catch it momentarily. Looks like Valorant is going to be taking a quick couple of moments as well. So we have a quick chance for a breather here. Mm -hmm. um, but from the Valorant match that we've got the watch the majority of, um, where do you go from there? I don't have exactly the map select in front of me, but if mm -hmm. you were to guess as well, where do you think would we go? Uh, I feel like you want to go on a map that you're comfortable on for sure. I believe just a standard loser usually picks the next rap, map. or I mean, they draft it ahead of time right. rather for Valorant. So I'm, I have fighting game brain. Usually loser gets to pick the map True. or change characters. Wrong so. stage. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong stage. Well, they're not going to be able to choose exactly where they want to go, but I'm assuming if they're drafting, I'd hope Icebox wasn't their pick. Otherwise, right, they're right, in right, trouble. Right. Um, but if they're going to be playing on their home territory, then I feel like you just got to stick to the basics. Literally, 
just go with your raw fundamentals and not intentionally dipping into the fighting game uh, thought process here. If you try to get too fancy, if you try to go for too many, you know, uh, just flagrant moves, <laughs> things that are too excessive, too flashy, then you end up tripping over your own feet. You really just need to strip things down to their basics and just hit the guy in front of you and then just keep doing that until you win, right? You don't have to go anything crazy. You don't have to do these cool smoke tricks where you're right. blocking off this angle. You get a one-way here. One Literally just, hey, guys, there's a guy on A. Okay, we're going to go B. <laughs> and then you just go B and plant the bomb, right? I think that's something that they need to do. They just need to slow down a little bit. But, again, I'm – making a call back to even the LAN uh, that we I casted the other day. Mm -hmm. um, I felt like if they're playing slowly, it's not out of choice, it's out of fear. Right. And I saw that a lot in this game as well. If you're playing slowly, you want it to be on your own terms, calculated slowly, but not fear slowly. And I felt like there was a lot of nervousness in their play. I want to see them relaxed, comfortable, and ready to kind of execute their own game plan. But speaking of ready to execute, it looks like the Saints are getting ready to be executed. Northwood seems to either have a graphical glitch or to have previously won two games in the series. Uh, or I'm assuming it's a graphical glitch because we are on Search and Destroy, so that's game two. Yeah, I'm it, assuming it the said, Saints might have won that yeah, one. Yeah, it said Northwood was 2-0 in game number one. So I'm not 100% sure as to where we stand right now. But of course, <laughs> Call of Duty is getting underway. We also do see Valorant is getting underway and Sunset is going to be the pick. This might be the first time casting Sunset for myself. So that'll mm. be a fun one for me. And one thing that I will mention, because he did kind of bring up the uh, like FGC brain. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there was a point where all, like when I was starting off, all I knew was League of Legends, uh, StarCraft, and like fighting games. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know what the term peaking was. <laughs> But when they would like peek in and out, in and out, I called it footsies. Ah, <laughs> I like that. When you said peeking, I thought you meant playing at your peak. I thought you were going to no, say no, that no, someone no, no, on our no. team's peaked. I was like, I'm ready for Dan Unchained. I, I, I like this, but. Hey, well, when I get unchanged, I, I get in trouble. So we try, to, we try to be careful there. But yeah, there's a few times where I've used like neutral um, footsies mm. and fundies in uh, <laughs> in FPS broadcast that so people are looking at me like, what the heck is he talking hey, about? I'll keep doing it as long <laughs> as the management doesn't complain about it. I Hey, I will use all those terms. It makes sense to me, and if you need help, I'll explain it to you. Because <laughs> to break down that last game, their neutral was really bad. Um, they're really good at doing combos, the Saints. Like, once they got in, they are able to do this smoke, this lay just down, we stand here, you stand here. <laughs> but you can't do combos if you have no footsies you're not gonna get the hit confirm you can't really take all right, it out like all that. right you're talking my language exactly. I hear this, but, uh, <laughs> now it, it's a lot easier to communicate these things when i can use my words but nothing communicates better than a bullet to the back as we saw nilla boy putting one in a saint on call of duty but we're gonna see a lot more bullets as the valorant action gets picked up so we're on sunset saint Clair college looks to be starting on attack side once again against cumberland university yeah, and then on the side of Search and Destroy, it looks like the Saints are actually on a very, very strong start here and going to finish a the job there. So it puts them up 3-0 nice and quick here into game number two. And a solid jump from them so far. Let's see if they can keep that uh, pressure going. But we're going to hop on over now to see if the Saints can break this curse of pistol rounds in 10 seconds time. Actually, it does look like we're in a quick timeout as uh, somebody had a... A package or something go to the door? I can't remember what it is. They saw. lost their package. They lost their pack. Okay, so yeah, internet's just being yeah. fun with them. So, <laughs> in a moment's time, probably take a look and see what's going on elsewhere. But uh, again, for people, because I see a couple more people in the chat, of which, of course, first, welcome and thank you for joining us. But if you are looking for the varsity match for VCT uh, Challengers, that is going to be Knights Arena underscore A, where that matchup is going. Down. Knights with the K, by the way. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> if you want to check out the rest of the matches and be fixated on one of them, exclamation mark streams will bring up everything that you need in the Twitch chat. As we see GMG going to find the flank and actually just get got. Just taken down nice and quick. And that is going to be Nillaboy going to find one more onto Rare. So too quickly down against our Saints Academy squad. It's going to be up the factions and Siri, who's been having a bit of a game for himself here. As it's going to be four to one as we do hear their commentators here. Let's let them take it away. Factions, though, giving chase. 
almost gets caught out on the reload has to rotate out somehow still alive and is able to get up onto bravo objective and into the elevators as siri goes down it's all up to factions in a 1v3 situation pops the daddy and looks to make a play bomb going down on bravo no alpha excuse me i thought it was being planted bravo but i was mistaken factions reveals location but is able to take out Nilla. rotates up and gets crate it's a 1v1 now it's tickle me tweety is the last one up an interesting choice of name but it's factions going against tickle me tweety but is going to call on the cruise missile can they strike true gotta run tickle me tweety has taken cover and is able to stay alive but precious map information given to factions goes for the reload tickle me tweety spots factions factions pushing up aggressively and it pays off factions ruling over this northwood team and just taking it to them in a 1v3 situation going 7 and 0 factions is the ruling faction in this land ladies and gentlemen the ccl you better watch out that was textbook search and destroy clutch moments from faction sliding up tickle me tweety had to be sent back to the manufacturer for defects it was a callback ladies and gentlemen and unfortunately they will not be hitting the production lines anytime soon again that was beautiful factions ain't no two ways about it a solid solid game from st Clair. they are able to stay up and stay undefeated thus far in search and destroy thanks to that incredible clutch from factions in a 1v3 a hotly contested 1v3 it might have been for the ace but we'll have to watch that back on the replay as i was just too caught up in the moment Faction still sitting at seven and oh as Tickle Me Tweety goes through the underground looking for a massive flank, but GMG catches him. Sai looking for a nade, but I don't think that's going to catch anybody. Great tries to pick up the flank, but Siri getting back to their killing ways as they take out factions. Faction streak is done by team by their own teammates' hands. That is tough. And to come from Siri as well, GMG taking out Nilla and Sai all alone. It was dropped down to about 40 HP, but picks up the regen. Oh, that is tough for factions. They are going to be a bit upset on that one. They may be up 4-0, but their 7-0 streak was taken away as St. Clair is taking it 5-0 and has basically won the match at this point. When you go up 5-0 and search and destroy, it is nigh impossible to reverse sweep. Now, I say nigh because it has happened before. It is not completely out of Northwood's hands just yet, but... The door is closing. It's that scene in Indiana Jones before he reaches for his hat as the door slams shut in the ancient tomb. You got to be careful here, Northwood. This is your last chance, your last hope, your last opportunity. You do not want to go down 2-0 in the series. You do not want to beat, beat out 6-0 in Search and Destroy. Nades and stuns coming out. Nilla going for that lower right-hand flank. Once again, as Tickle Me Tweety picks up the first blood on GMG. Again, huge. Then Northwood was able to strike first, but Rare picks up the trade, and it's already 3v3. Siri taking out Crate. Nilla has that low ground flank, but is unable to find anyone as they rotate out at the last second. Tickle me, Tweety. Looking to stay alive. Nilla looking for the shots, and is able to secure it as Tickle me, Tweety goes down. It is all up to Nilla in a 1v2 here in round six to prevent themselves from going down 2-0 in the series nilla has to step up something big he's got to be more than vanilla here i need some vanilla with chocolate sprinkles add some whipped cream on the top and a cherry for something special grabs rare and now a 1v1 factions clutched up once before but can nilla do the same in a 1v3 situation it's on the two streak currently needs the three Factions is still technically 7-0, but went down to their teammate, so might be feeling a little shaky after that. Luckily, it's just Factions solo this time around, as Nilla goes for the longest flank I've seen in a while. Goes for the plant, Dolphin types on the bomb, and might have just been a miss input, but Factions going to take advantage of that, as St. Clair College will take a 6-0-W in Search and Destroy. What a performance from Factions, who finishes 8-0, should have finished with an 8-streak. Nilla Dolphin dived on top of the bomb and got caught out. That is just tough to see. We're going to load up for Control. St. Clair's up 2-0, but my goodness, well done, Factions. What an incredible streak. <laughs>
Well, it looks like so far on the side of St. Clair, things are going all good there. And I've got to say, their commentator, we got to get him on the desk at some point. He has single-handedly <laughs> shown off his puns and dad joke skills that I can absolutely approve of. I he's, approve too. He's made me hungry on the desk after all these vanilla jokes. And like somebody mentioned um, in the Twitch chat, it, like... Just this casting style reminds me of when I was first starting out. We gotta let him loose at some point here. But it is good to see them continuing there. As we now see Sage just on an absolute tear in the midst of that one. They went down the first two rounds and they were able to get one back. And now looking to maybe get themselves a tie game if they can keep up the momentum. But a good couple of eliminations the other way is going to keep this close. Yep, Storm leading the charge. Uh, I, just, I just remember once he mentioned that I never called him by his gamer tag. I always called him Jace. But I just realized now I called him Storm. And I'm going to keep calling him Storm. Spike but planted. they are able to get the spike planted. Storm gets it through. They're gonna have the rest of the Saints covering every flank that they can. Hey, coming. Oh, incoming indeed. Commodus not gonna be able to find it. Trying to get the uh, wall bag again, expressing the game knowledge as just as the smoke comes up, he's gonna peek out and not gonna find the kill. Gonna go down for it. Kairu on the high ground, gonna go down as well. But Storm find one, now finding two to secure the round, clutch it out. Although I guess technically that doesn't count as a clutch. It counts as just winning. Uh, Would have been a clutch if they <laughs> found him instead, but a very successful round nonetheless for the Saints. It's a clutch moment nonetheless there. That 1v2 was definitely not guaranteed, but that flash right before that swing there from Storm, able mm -hmm. to secure that one and just Clutching it up in the end there. Was that the Blade of the Ruined King that he was using as a knife? That was, uh, if that is, that's kind of cool. But uh, going into this next round, Saints sitting pretty. Oh, Meanwhile, nice Cumberland, they're in a little bit of a world of hurt. So we'll have to see if Saints can take this as a snowballing opportunity and get as many rounds here on the attacking side as they can. I'm not 100% sure in regards to like sides favored here yeah. on Sunset. I always assume defense, but I could very, very well. Hey, don't look at me. Wrong, but... I don't know either, but just based off of the play, I'm assuming that this can go either way because both teams are demonstrating such uh, a familiarity with the map, expressing a lot of skill in the game. Unless Dean charging through like Leroy Jenkins is going to go down like him too. Storm is going to trade one for one. Spectre finding Swarm in the midst. Chaos, Flash coming around. Gonna find Spectre's eyes. He's gonna Spike go down, down for it. Spike down in mid, just as was said by Sky. But the Saints are not out of it just yet. They still have a lot of fighting left inside of them, but they might not have a lot of time to express it. As actually, no, he's gonna go for the spike. I believe he teleported to pick that up. He's gonna go back and teleport to plant it rather. And now they're on the defense, looking to stop Cumberland from getting the defuse. Had two on two, and they are both right next to each other. Oh, oh fire, and they each managed to wow. find one. Drop the wow. mech on them on as well. Okay, that's kind of interesting. That was a little bit scary, though, there for St. Clair, because when you go Leroy Jenkins, you need to show up or you're going to get eaten alive by the whelps. And it oh, seems yeah. like he got absolutely destroyed initially, but the Saints able to come back in the end. And the perfect flank, and the fact that they both took the opposite targets, which is absolutely that's cool. its own right. And now... Game number three for the Call of Duty matchup for our Academy squad is now underway on to control. We did see the Saints just win the Search and Destroy. Not 100% sure, of course, how game one number one, but this could very well be match point. Very well could be. And just while it's still fresh in memory, that those pickoffs at the end there, it's like a its like a stealth game, uh, you know, where you can tag the, the, tag the guy that you want killed, and then your teammate will kill them for you. Beautiful. It was almost robotic just like swarms headshot on the start of this round storm using all his abilities to his best of his ability he's gonna be able to find swarm as a result specter was gonna pick up specter before that though storm is gonna get another kill to continue this round gonna use his ultimate see what he can find with it swimming around the ground he's trying to get anybody's ankles to secure the round more comfortably for them but the saints look to be on point, the Kyrie planting it in the corner, nice and secure. But now, Cumberland University able to find Storm's head as soon as the smoke is 
Pace. He's going to find Commodus as well. K going to download enemy positions, see exactly where they are. Lakairu, the last man standing, faking the teleport to make them think he repositioned. Very smart, very well played by him. They know where he was supposed to be, but now they don't know where he actually is. Hitting around the corner, comes around, finds one. Now he has to reposition immediately or else he's going to get caught. He's going to get found out. Just around the corner, Hostway, you have this. You know you can, you're capable of it, but oh. no! Smoke dissipates. K gets the 3K. Gonna get the deep fuse as well in the tense round for both teams, but it is ultimately gonna go the way of Cumberland University. That frustrating moment when the footsteps are on one side of one side of your head, then all of a sudden it's on the other one. You're trying to keep up with everything, but they just <laughs> happen to be behind you. Close one, but not quite gonna go in the favor of a Kru this yes. time by. So you hop on over to our double to see what's going on. As of right now, Saints seem like they're in full control after taking the first initial point. It is going to be Northwood making their attack this time by. But if it keeps going at this pace, it very well can be what feels like a Saint sweep. Because I'm going to say that like, these games seem like they're going quick for COD standards. Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing that Saints are up 2 0 in this one. Do hear some alts getting popped on the Valorant side of things. So somebody is diving on in. We'll see momentarily. That's going to be the Cumberland University Jet. So going to end up spending the knives this time by. Everyone's bought up, so not a save round in the slightest. We'll be interesting to see how that plays up as we go along here. But Call of Duty-wise, seems pretty quiet to start things off. Saints doing a good job of uh, keeping them away for the most part. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the economic destitution at the end of this Valorant round because like you said, everybody spent and the game has been pretty even so far. So whoever loses this is likely going to be feeling it in the wallet. But on side of Call of Duty, it looks to be the Saints are holding onto this A point for dear, dear life. Exactly. Trying to make sure that Cumber uh, Northwood can't get their claws all over it. They're inching over to it, but ultimately the Saints are able to dissipate it every single time they find out the GMG on a flag killing screen now rwn almost going down on the ballot side had hp left running for his life he's got spit in his face bullets in his back everything is going wrong for him comet is giving chase potentially or just laying down the trap wire left. but rwn is still going to see if at least they can find some information storm Spike is going to go down, down. comet is finally going to put down rwn cluey is going to be facing Thompson's the screen dissipates up. now going to see what opportunity they can find this is such an awkward and spread out scenario here. The Saints are going to try and maybe make their way back towards the B site instead. Ten seconds left. And there's not much to really stop them from doing it. Hot Dog is going to be making their way on over here, but it's going to be a little bit too late. The Saints might be able to get into a bit of a post plant. The Spectre is, or Safer rather, is nowhere to be found. And Cluey is just arriving right now, does manage to take care of Spectre. Two on three, the oh, oh, oh. of the round, and Cluey is getting the 3K, looking for one more. But Kairu's not ready to make this one end yet. Spike down, nobody on top of it as of this moment here. But Kairu versus two okay. versus one, looking for this one. Second round, it feels like in a row that he's gonna have to try and clutch on up. When does he swing? Let's he go! finds it! The 3K to seal the deal. Beautifully done there from Josue. Redemption is found in an even more beautiful fashion. That was three kills for him to end up? Yeah. Just the two. That was three, three kills. kills. Yep. He came back with the vengeance after losing that clutch in the previous round. Now champion for his team. They're singing his praises at the top of the leaderboard as well. Very strong performance overall from both teams. Three to four. This game is looking close. The Saints have definitely found their foothold and are giving back a lot more fight against Cumberland University after map one. We all have that one friend that's like, oh, I, I didn't clutch. I wouldn't give me a moment. <laughs> Next run happens. Um, give me... No, I got this. Give me another one. No, he didn't even wait. As you see, actually, on the defensive side of things here from Cumberland, they're not waiting. They're actually diving. They had, like we were saying before, going full Leroy Jenkins on this one and managed to take care of three of the Saints with only losing one for themselves. So a very, very valuable play to start things off. Storm is going to have to run for the hills to try and get... I, like acquainted Page with three. their teammate once again to at least have some sort of fair fighting chance. Two on four, definitely a rough spot to end up being into. But now, Comdus on one side, Storm on the other, Spike in the middle of the B site, but it is not been planned. It's going to have to be taken care of. So Comdus does manage to find Hot Dog, taking him off the board here. Last 
Oh, tied up here, and it's just going to be trade after trade. Commodus does manage to find one of them, but there is just too many bodies, and that's going to bring, uh, bring rather, um, Cumberland up to four here. Of course, on the other opportunity here, the COD or the Call of Duty game is still going and possibly concluding very, very shortly here on Saints Academy CA2. We'll take a quick peek here at our economy and then make a quick switch. So. We'll have to see how that one ends up going in a moment's time. But it looks like here on the Saints side of things, it is going to be another save, or not another, but their mm -hmm. first save round in a little bit to try and uh, recuperate some of the no bleeding that they had lost from the last couple of rounds. Yeah, for sure, but they're still in a strong position. Nonetheless, they don't want to give complete dominance over to Cumberland University. Might not have a choice in it, though, as Swarm finds a very clean and efficient kill onto Dean, which is going to be spelling a lot of trouble for the Saints coming around the corner. Finding Storm as well was not ready for it. Hands around his ankles. He's going to be able to find Spectre now with the headshot. Not going to get a 4K, but RWN is going to carry the torch forward and get the kill that he so desired and take it out. Basically, an ace, a shared ace, but the two of them kind of work together on that one, picking up where Swarm left off, RWN finishes out the round of two kills. And while this timeout does go through, do want to give the update on the Academy Call of Duty match versus uh, Northwood University. So if we go quickly back to what my prediction was, I said that we were going to lose this thing 3-1, right? Yeah, I said we're going to win 3-0 one way or the other for both teams. And... I say time and time again, I have absolutely no problem and encourage myself to be wrong. Saints just 3 0 Northwood. They did. <laughs> just Saints absolutely did. crushing fashion. Absolutely. Uh, let's uh, submit that one to Awesome Games <laughs> done quick because I think we, wow. probably, we probably spent more time lobby hopping than we did actually in game. So, my goodness, beautifully done there from the Academy Call of Duty squad. And big thank you, of course, to the students of the. Um, Esports Administration and Entrepreneurship Program yeah. for taking the Academy COD matches and streaming them as their project and making well it done. a little bit easier for us <laughs> to get the, that, those matches covered and being able to feature them here on game day. Very well done by the by the students. Very well done by the players, of course, as well. They're able to put on an excellent game for us to watch. Fortunately, since the students are kind of taking it over, we don't get to watch it as much, but that's a small price to pay for the experience that they're getting. Do you hear some Valor in action, so hopefully we'll be get swung right back into that as soon as possible. But in the meantime, we still have a lot more to look forward to. We have the Varsity Call of Duty game coming up as well. Yep, that should be happening in a moment's time. And bear with us for a brief technical issue. Um, we're gonna let's cast this like radio. <laughs> we got it's like a, the good old days. That oh, we got baseball. all we got like alts coming out at all points here. It does seem like it does not. Oh, I do not hear the kill animation or the kill sound effect mm -hmm. going through though. Planted. But it does look like just gonna keep on going here. Right, so. Yeah. In the meantime. We did kind of mention the Call of Duty Varsity matchup as the shots fire in the background, but that matchup is scheduled to start for 8.30, so not much further away here. And we're going to once again, so I'm looking forward to that one starting up very, very shortly. Yeah, um, both of our Call of Duty teams, like we mentioned, Varsity team is definitely a powerhouse in their own right. Academy also proving what they're capable of tonight as well. You know, 3-0 against Northwood is no small feat. And our Varsity, or our Valorant Academy team is fighting very strong right now. Uh, we can hear them fighting mm. for it, but whether or not we're going to see them remains to be seen. And again, as the students just um, start to clean on out here, thank you to them for taking care of Academy Con. But in yeah. the briefest of moments here, we should be hopping into Valorant's because I know you all want to see the action in just a moment's time. In mm -hmm. fact, I'm going to try and cheat and peek and see what's going on here. Um, because of what exactly happened. For sure. Let's take a quick peek here. Ugh. Looks like the action is still underway. 6-4 Cumberland still right now. 6-4 for Cumberland. Okay, I was surely confident that the Saints would be able to take up that next round. That but it seems standing. to be the case that Cumberland was able to found their footing after those previous, you know, close calls. The Saints are still very much in this. In fact, just taking this round as revenge, uh, you know, just had to... Uh, 
just really cement the, the victory there. Uh, six to five now, last round uh, before the swap. Now, other Dan, tell me how you feel the Saints are faring so far. I mean, let's throw it back to FGC for a second. If we can keep finding combos like that, like polywag into the water gun, into the headshot, into the extra sauce on top. I mean, if we can keep doing that to every player, we might be right back into this one in just a moment's time. But getting the one, and of course, all hands on deck here for this final round here. Try and tie this up 6-6. Six, six. Nothing you can, or you can't carry anything over from halftime. So now, whatever you have, fire it now and leave nothing on the table as the Saints are looking to make their way towards the B site. A little bit of him and high trying to figure out where everybody's at. Cluey making their presence known, and now the Saints maybe looking towards A instead. Oh yeah, the Saints are able to redirect like a heat-seeking missile, or in fact, a cold-seeking missile. They want to go where they are the least amount of bodies. They're going to be rotating over to A. They can detect that things are getting a little too hot over on B site, but the same can be said for Cumberland University. Recognizing that sending, Swarm over to meet them on the rotation. Swarm is going to be able to find... Okay. Oh, absolutely nobody. Hot Dog actually shot Spectre, who is behind Storm, and Storm was able to take him out. The same behind him was able to take down Swarm. The Kairu is going to be able to take the kill down onto RWN. Ultimate is going to be able to get recovered by Storm, and the Viper's Pit is going to get committed by Clue to make sure that this is going to be as hard as possible for the Saints to find, but Dean was able to kill himself oh, no. uh, in a mishap of preposterous proportions. Chloe is going to be able to find and 2v1. Now it's a 1v1. K versus Commodus, and it is a mirror match to say the least. And now we're really in fighting game territory where mirror matches stress everybody out, commentators included, but it is going to go with the side of Cumberland University. And we're going to be taking us over to the next half of map two. Unfortunately there for Commodus, the end leg, they're throwing the smoke out. Just caught him with no gun ready for when the smoke did eventually drop, so now does end up losing that round. It's going to be the half then going over to Cumberland University. Granted, this is much closer than what we saw during the Icebox match. 7-5, to five, nothing to scoff at here for the Saints, getting a lot of damage done on that attacking side. And let's see if they can turn this defensive side into their favor, maybe get the snowball rolling a little bit off of a nice pistol win, but we'll have to see momentarily here with uh, a little bit of breaching power. Ready to rock here for, for Spectre. Maybe the, the uh, A side save. We'll see if they're going to get aggressive with it, as it's going to be uh, Storm alongside Dean kind of leading the charge through the center. A very aggressive push. Going to find a collision course there with one of the members momentarily. But everybody else on Cumberland, for the most part, just went to B. They're going to be able to get this uh, spike down probably for free. And the Saints are going to have to retake. They're going to be trying to play on, surprisingly, even players. But now, in fact, the Kyrie is going to be able to find one. Swarm is going to return it. And now we are right back to where we were. Even players on both sides. 4v4. The spike is planted and the Saints are not comfortably on B yet. They are getting closer every second that passes. They are taking ground and finding an opening. They go straight for it. They already see the spike. They're gonna go for the defuse. They're not even gonna fake it. Oh, okay. Gonna get the headshot for that. Commodus able to find the high ground but not find the kills. Gonna be able to take the round Cumberland University. Man, that's just awkward. The Saints went for that initial push down the center but did not really find anybody. By the time they got into some sort of de defensive position, it was mm. already in a retake position because the spike already planted at B. Cumberland was sitting nice and pretty. And yeah, it was basically a four and five or a five on five at that point, but you're all still just funneling in the chokes. And somebody's got a crosshair on you once you walk through those corridors and did not quite go into the Saints' favor. There's going to be another pistol round and not going into Saints' favor. See if they can maybe find themselves a thrifty here because they will need something to get the ball rolling. It's going to be Storm leading the charge with the rest of the Saints to try and stop that A site. So a lot of red over there. That is a lot of red charging right on through. No hesitation, just sending it. And Swarm is not going to be the 
able to find the one, but it is going to get traded up pretty quickly. K now finds one more as well. K real on board. K finds a double hot dog through the smoke. Getting jump damage, but is not going to be able to get any more. Ooh. And there's Cluey once again. There's no rounds where it seems like Cluey and Hot Dog aren't on the board, and they absolutely hold this one nicely. For a second there, it's like he had the opposite of aimbot. He was, it's like his mouse was being repelled from his body. Again, if only he knew where he was, but he's only a player. He can only see the smoke cloud. Oh, you're just trying to get that extra damage from the from an earlobe shot, you know? Oh, true, true, true. Or a sh shoulder blade shot. Red, they have like red targets on your earlobe. It's very uncommon knowledge in this game, but yes, even for characters who have their ears covered, they have red targets on the earlobe. You shoot them, you do bonus damage. Yeah, and then some say that there's actually an Easter egg where if you shoot where the Sephiroth w wing would be, you get like an extra bonus, like three HP. <laughs> Along those lines. And we do have Dean just absolutely shutting me up here with a fantastic double to start this round. The Kairu is going to find oh. one for another. And it, it may not have been Lakeru, but Storm was there to clean that thing up. And okay, we are back in the game here. They really wanted to shut us up there. Like you say Sephiroth and they just go bloodthirsty. I'm scared <laughs> to say that now around them when around the school. I don't know what's going to happen. They might just start swinging, but they are swinging in the game at the very least. And that's all we want to see. Nine to six. The Saints are slowly crawling back. Uh, now, Cumberland University actually reeling economically. They have nary a penny in the bank. They got the guns in their hands, but if they lose this one, they'll be really feeling it tomorrow. Absolutely. Now, let's take a look and see how the Saints decide to defend. A little bit of a line of scrimmage, actually, across both sites this time by and Cumberland going to take their time. Dean not going to be opting for the full send this time. Wurt in the last round, but he's going to play defensively here. Does know that that Viper Wall is possibly going to activate. But Cumberland hovering around that A site for now, going to start smoking it on. Making their way through. Swarm leading the charge alongside the doggy, but it's actually going to be Spectre before the dog actually makes contact. He's going to get that first initial shot. Is going to go down to RWN, but now the Saints are going to have to try and essentially retake the A site because only Dean is there right now and it's going to be a one on four against Dean as of this moment. <laughs> oh so no. The Saints are running but you can see they're cautiously making their move and with how much how slowly they're taking this it is just going to make things that much more difficult when they have to get this thing post planned. Yeah it's it's moments like this where you have to just trust your gut you have to recognize the game say no that there's no chance they're going to be over here I just have to run make I a beeline exactly. Dean's down that means there's no Saints on point except for Lakairu's 22 oh, HP might as well not be there he's a piece of paper in the wind Commodus is going to be the only Saint left and he's right. gonna opt to save his gun don't remember exactly what the money's looking like for the saints but this is probably going to be the smart play regardless 4v1 is never really going to be a favorable matchup and if you're not feeling confident in it don't go for it see if you can find any pickoffs on rotators but just save your gun and one of the things that i would uh, preach with some late teams that i do see uh. congress does manage to get the one so doing a little bit of damage here might be able to continue the run aside, or he may have found himself in defensive location. Spots the one player, but you could see three members of Cumberland are all now on the chase. One way or another, he will fall. And now it's going to be 10-6 in the favor of Cumberland. But one thing that I'm noticing here from the Saints that I would tell to like some of the teams that I would work with, um, I would rather everybody all in on the wrong strategy mm. than hesitate on the right one. No, for like, sure. St um, strategy can be practiced and whatnot, but when you don't believe in the in either the, uh, the shot caller's call out or in the initial playbook, then that mo those fractions of moments, fractions of well, seconds that you are hesitating, it could be the difference between you getting into position or not. And it feels like that's kind of what happening there, or what was happening rather, with the Saints in that last round on the defensive side. Absolutely, and in those moments, every second counts. You can't hesitate. You can't afford it. Even just as it's better to feel confident in your loss than than remorseful 
in your loss. You want to at least lose confidently, lose with the wrong exactly. play and feel happy about it and be like, oh, we made the wrong play. But when everybody's disagreeing what the play is, then it's not good for team morale and it's just stressful overall. But Dean, what is good for team morale is finding clicks like that. Very well done. Lakairu is just spraying through that smoke. Not much else you can do except for die, I suppose. Going to be sprinting through Swarm, dashing in like a white blur. Storm now, seeing if he can find the blob in the face and poor guy. It's like a fly without a wing, just hitting every wall on his way to the window, but he's not going to find the escape. Going to be sent to heaven by Storm. It's just, I'm sorry, that was really funny to watch. But now, just seeing what he can get done. The smoke is up. He's going to be forced to go down, going to get wall banked by Hot Dog. That's going to be another round for the Saints. 11 to six, Sorry, another round for Cumberland University. 11-6, to six, the Saints are still trying to climb this mountain. It makes me feel a little bit better as a player. <laughs> what I see, even in competitive <laughs> matches, when you can tell when the panic option was hit on somebody. And unfortunately, there for the Jet on the side of uh, Cumberland, there for Swarm. I mean, Swarm is playing absolutely insane so far in this game. 19-13 for themselves <laughs> as of this moment. <laughs> but you can tell, it's as soon as the flash came in, they were like flying in midair, dashing all over the place. Like you said, the, the fly without the wig. It's like, yeah, that's a panic moment. It's yeah. Like, okay, I'm glad it's not just me. But Nobody now here. on the defensive side of things here, it's looking like an absolute beeline towards the safe site. This could get nasty. It's going to get nasty one way or the other. It's going to be nasty in the good way or bad way. No matter whose team you're cheering for, Commodus good is shot. going to be taking Swarm out of the sky. Knives are left on the floor. Commodus getting another one. Clue's going to be able to take him down finally. Dean Storm going to get picked off. Now, just RWN going to be the person going down for the university. Next is going to be Hot Dog 63 thanks to Storm's marksmanship. One member left. Cluey is going to be able to take down Spectre, taking this down to a 1v2. A site is still the place to be. But if you can find the spike and get to it safely, Dawson's that's going to be down. another challenge in and of itself. The Saints still holding strong, making sure they keep an eye on the spike. Louis is going to have to find a safe rotation over without getting spotted out by them. Okay, I don't know if this is for the save or if they just straight up don't know what's going on. Actually, it seems like they are on a collision course here. And Cluey has had good shots all day, just like that. 3K, but cannot defeat Lakeru. Takes care of the second player, or could not take care of the second player, rather. And now Saints back on the board. Trailing 11 to 7, but still not out of this one yet. For sure. I, I feel like. Uh, Chloe definitely made the right play to go for the win. Yeah. It's a 1v2, far from impossible, Absolutely. and you're already playing on the yeah. comfortable position 11 to 6. Yeah. It was 11 to 7 now that that play didn't work out in your favor. Plus, your team has money. If you really need, someone can buy for you. So, I would say it was a good play, uh, but not going to work out in their favor. Not going to be feeling it too hard. Heading into the next round, Cumberland University just needs to really commit themselves to a single push and just pour onto the site. The Saints are very leaving the, they're leaving these very poorly defended at the start of the rounds, opting to have a lot of people rotating. Like we're seeing right now, Commodus, 5 HP left. A very common number we're seeing. Clues going to be able to find the headshot on top of the Sheriff. Now, they're going to be firmly on the point, and the Saints are going to be left with holding the bag. Nothing inside of it, however. Left confused. Yeah. Dean, in fact, his head's going to be in that bag. Sending a message. K is going to find the head of Lakairu. Looking to take this over to a quick 12-7. One game away from taking the series over St. Clair College Academy. Oh, God. If you're finding the head in the bag, I definitely fear for you. With the match point on the line. And no money. This game's starting to look like the end of school days. If you know, you know. But this is definitely uh, looking a little out of reach here for the Saints. They have next to nothing in the bank and are going to have to play against this match point for uh, like shares and maybe one or two people will be semi-bought up. Like Spectre's got the Bulldog, awesome. but other than myself, because I'm terrible at the game, nobody likes the Bulldog. So this is going to be a rough spot. <laughs> rough indeed, just like the Bulldog. Hopefully the bark will not be stronger than the bite. Swarm is going to be the first to go down to like Hyru. Um, I was going to say, this round is really going to hinge on Hostway finding a really insane, uh, or sorry, not Hostway, uh, going to be Dean finding a really insane Killjoy ultimate, but it's not going to be found, and they're all the Saints in the matter of me finding that sentence. Saints are going to be going down. It's just going to be Commodus. The plant is going down. In fact, already calling GG. Cumberland University confident in that. Confident they are correct. The Saints are going to go down, and the second game is going to be going to Cumberland University, taking the series 2-0.
I mean, rather confidently at that. I, I never like to see an early GG, but to be fair, they definitely had full control of that site. So 13-7 sure. to seven in that one. The first game on Icebox was not necessarily a strong one there for the Saints as well. So Far from it. Going to have to go back to the drawing board there. Personally, in terms of their stats, however, the kid are actually uh, okay, leading the way. charge there. 25-16, and 16, an absolutely fantastic performance in their own right. But as you see, Cluey and we saw Swarm really step it up here in this game for as sure. well. And then Hot Dog basically got to take a backseat. Did not necessarily have to be the person fighting that <laughs> when you have two people already getting into the 20s by themselves. So fair enough there as our Saints Academy going to fall in 2 fashion. Mm -hmm. And then we're not quite done yet, though. Not at <laughs> all. Just like you said, we're not done for the night just yet. We did have two series we just finished covering. We had the Academy Call of Duty team versus Northwood White. Saints were able to take that series in a convincing 3-0. Our Valorant team, our Valorant Academy team, however, not able to be as successful, losing the series 2-0 against Cumberland University. But next up, we have our Varsity Call of Duty team, who is going to be facing off against Cumberland University once again. This is where I'm going to expect the... Uh the, the refrag of sorts, the revenge mm. kill <laughs> on, uh, on Cumberland, to say the least. You may have swept us in Valorant, but are you ready for a world of pain now, Ooh. Cumberland? With, uh, We're coming for with you. With our Call of Duty squad right there. <laughs> that being said, though, it could very well be a very awesome back and forth match. For sure. Um, I just have, like we were kind of talking about during the pre-show, it's just extremely hard to like bet against the Saints varsity Call of Duty team yeah. at all. Basically. But... Again, I want to see the challenge here. I want to put out a good show. And as much as my migraine may want me to call it an early night CA <laughs> sweep, I awesome. would absolutely love to see a good match in its own right for, th for the sake of the show here. But another thing that is also going on here on my screen right now from Knights Arena underscore A, if you're looking for our varsity Valorant squad and how they are doing in VCT Challengers, that is currently going on as well. Saints are up eight to five and i believe this is game two Ooh. of a lower bracket round four matchup against a team called the basement which is an appropriate enough name because i think that's where we're going to leave them at the end of this game if it keeps going the way it is just storm in the basement Ooh. and call it uh call it a night there but yeah. uh also while we have the opportunity is walking out right now big thank you to patrick for observing good work chambers our matchup we had quite the <laughs> quite the setup to say the least here today oh yeah so big thank you have a great night man great job might have been a, a very smooth viewing experience for everybody at home or at least we very much hope so but you never know on the back end things can get <laughs> quite hectic and we definitely feel it um but it's always a pleasure to put on a good show and that's what keeps us going absolutely um well some people behind the scenes are running around putting up the fires like i know tommy is on an absolute tear so far today going all over the place keeping things held down and whatnot but we try to keep those uh those moments to as minimal as possible and for it's sure. all big thanks to everybody behind the scenes of course for making that happen mm -hmm. nine five now here for the saints in this valorant matchup you're missing so, on the action again so it's still knight's through. arena we would absolutely show it here however we are technically not allowed to <laughs> so um that's why we don't have it pulled up at this very well moment but um as we get ready for Call of Duty, which should be technically happening at any moment, assuming that the Call it of is Duty Call lobby, of Duty, though. Uh, lobby gods yeah. kind of let us. Any thoughts going into this Cumberland matchup here? Only thought I have going forward is I want to see Brandon get us some more clips because he seems <laughs> to be really good at doing that, and I'm excited to see what more he's got cooking up. Of course, you got the rest of the team. I'm a little bit more partial to Brandon because he's always doing a good job at making sure my table is reserved for when my team has team practices. So, shout hey. to Brandon. <laughs> and now, Brandon getting clips in terms of in Call of Duty or on camera? Because, I mean, he's been a bit of a mixture of both. If you know I didn't want to bring it up. <laughs> but hey. if you'd bring it up, it's fair game. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> hey, all in good fun at the end of the day. But um, my main thoughts going into this matchup is when we eventually do start getting the maps, which I don't think I have just yet mm -hmm. for Call of Duty, is are we going to see Saints on... Not I don't want to call it try-hard mode, mm. but going with what they know like are we going to see terminal like three times today right. or are we going to see things like rio and these other maps that we saw yesterday that we normally don't see our saints like touch at all so that's the main thing i'm going to be keeping an eye out for 
And then, I mean, Priestley is the uh, the fan favorites. Or one of our, or our entire COD team, basically, is fan favorites at fans. this point here. And if I do recall correctly, the little birdie in my ear is telling me we have some maps here for Call of Duty. What in the world are we going to? I'm pretty confident they're going to be doing things pretty mix and match this time around. Like you said, they want to try out some strategies. And while you're still uh, not necessarily early in the season, you're not at playoffs right now. If you're going to practice anything, now's the time to get it out of the way. So if you have those maps for us, then. Yeah, that we do, and I think I might have been on to something. We have Rio starting things off real, real hard point we're getting high rise which <laughs> i liked what um one of our um one of our students for broadcasting uh amanda said yesterday it was like uh, it's discount vertigo nah, <laughs> from <laughs> or somebody said it in the, in the room yesterday <laughs> but basically vertigo from uh, counter-strike put into call of duty we're gonna see that twice we're gonna see that for game oh, two really? as well as game three okay and then if we make it further than that, Skid Row Hardpoint is going to be the next one mm. alongside a deciding match of Rio Search and Destroy. So that is all, all on right. the docket, ready to go versus Cumberland. Um, production squad is just getting into lobby with the players and trying to get things all situated. So... I guess any final thoughts before we throw us on to a quick break? Um, yeah, like you said, everything is ready except for the lobby. So we're just going to be waiting patiently until we can get right into the action. And if you already know anything about Call of Duty, which unless you've been living under a rock, I'm sure you do, you know it's all action all the time. So stay tuned. You won't want to miss a thing. We'll see you very soon.
All right, welcome back, everybody. We are going to get ready to hop into our next Call of Duty matchup and our final matchup of the night, at least here on this stream. Mm -hmm. Of course, we have now the possibility of the revenge match here. It's going to be Cumberland University's Varsity Call of Duty team up against, of course, the St. Clair College Varsity Call of Duty team. And this is going to, in theory, be an absolute banger with both of these teams sitting in 2-0 records. Mm -hmm. So far flawless, and also flawless in regards to the games as well. No maps dropped. Everything has been 3-0s so far. So we have quite the exciting <laughs> one, to say the least. At least Absolutely. on paper. Yeah, and like you mentioned, uh, at the start of the stream, while we haven't personally seen a lot of Cumberland University, seeing what they've been able to pull off so far tonight is definitely giving me a lot of confidence that they are a team to be excited about, seeing how well they played the Valorant matchup, and now, hopefully, we're going to see how we well go. they can play the Call of Duty game against one of our strongest teams in our school, our Varsity Call of Duty team. They are going to start off with a strong first blood, but we are on Rio to start things off, not the usual turn terminal in hardpoint. Absolutely. And take a look at the roster there for Cumberland University starting things off. We've got Hon Honor, Calamity, Camp, and Crayon. Meanwhile, on the side of St. Clair, it's Priestley, Brandon, Enslea, and KB. Ooh. As we see Honor with a fantastic double to kind of start things off here as Cumberland University have been able to control the hardpoint. Controlling it so strongly. Saints are struggling to find a foot on that escalator to glory. Honor and Calamity are doing wonders for Cumberland University so far. KB finding his way onto the point and taking some points for himself now. A slide nice. battle. It feels like the Saints are already recognizing the formidable nature of their foes tonight and trying to match the momentum that is being pushed right out of the gate. We're starting now with the new hard points. The Saints have already secured it somewhat and Slaya almost gets the pick off, but now just forcing his attention back over to the hard point. Crayon's gonna go down. I like how simple all the names on Cumberland University is <laughs> very never gonna really find much slip ups. But a slip up is found by uh camp there. Gonna be able to take down Brandon and open up a point for his team. So far, so good there for Camp. Finally got to get put down there by Enslea, who does manage to find one more. And it's actually going to be the TK. Oh, no. Brandon manages to uh -oh. find Enslea. A perfect headshot. Rock player, however. So that is going to kind of open up the door here for Cumberland University to get a move on onto this hard point. Sure, Saints gathered a little bit of it, but they're not going to be able to get much more. As now 60-plus so far in the scoreboard here for Cumberland University. Next hard point. Where are we going? We'll find out in just a moment's time, I'm sure. A little bit towards... Uh, the west, central, central west area, as we now see KB finds one. There's going to be one player. It's going to be Honor, who's already on the point. Collision course there with KB. Ooh. Can KB find this one? That'd be huge. Absolutely does. Going to allow for St. Clair to get the initial pick here onto this hard point, but does end up falling with control now in the Cumberland um, zone. Can this contest go in the Saints' favor? Yep, the Battle of Main Street is now thoroughly underway with 43 seconds left. The Saints are establishing control, and they want to try to get as many points as they can. They have fallen quite a ways back in terms of the points, but they're slowly climbing back up. But Cumberland University does not want to even let that start to happen as they're trying to get pickoffs as they're really just rotating around the building and getting as many kills as they can from the outside. Brandon now on a killing spree, representing that it's not going to be that simple feeling. He's eventually going to go down, but the Saints are still holding on to the point strong. They've had every second of this point so far uncontested. 50 now to Cumberland University, 72. And it's only a matter of time before they're going to have to switch off and move to another point. But the Saints are already shooting oh. it on the bottom side of the map. Brandon finding another kill. Priest and Enslay with two beautiful ones for themselves. Right next to this van, who I'm sure is looking ready to blow up at any notice of a bullet finding it. It's going to be a little bit scary, but they're going to have to hold next to it regardless. I mean, Saints had a good little streak there of control controlling the hard point, finding these eliminations. However, Cumberland University firing on all cylinders now. Camp finds a double, Calamity finds one more. It's going to open the door now for Cumberland University to sit in that and hold defensive positions onto this hard point and gather as much points as possible. 80 in the bank right now for them as we now have Priestley waiting for the rest of the team. But from behind, Honor is going to find a Ooh. double before eventually going down. But KB finds the double. So just trading back and forth here. But these defensive positions here for the side of Cumberland may be too much and they've been able to hold the, that push there from the Saints break that 100 point and hang on to the sleeve. 
Absolutely. I want to remind both of these teams now, despite the fact that I know they can't hear me, their perfect record is on the line already Absolutely. in this first game. So even if you're not losing the series after this map, you're going to be losing a lot of pride if you drop this. So both teams definitely want to be bringing the heat over back to Main Street. It's going to be a battle to try to get over there. Both teams are pouring as much as they can to get over. Uh, gun battle is going to decide who's going to get the first touch. In fact, no, one more is going to need to be found. KB is going to need to fight against Camp. But is he going to find the shot? No, the nade oh. is going to take him out. The nades are going to be very notorious this week for Call of Duty. Brandon almost goes down cross map and still nobody finds the point except now the Saints finally touch it and they're going to be farming as much as they can hiding behind these pillars, hiding behind all this cover. Ensley is going to come down. Camp is going to find him with a headshot on the high ground though, sliding through all the windows. We're going to see the rest of the squad of the Saints trying to be as loose as, loose as possible. They're going to be showing their face there. Camp is going to get put down thanks to the assist of KB and Priestley. But no, KB is going to be found on the top of that stairs. going to get the kill, and the Saints are going to be able to ex extinguish the flame on this hard point and start moving over to the next one. The way they are dancing around the pillars and just kind of trading aggro, so to speak, mm -hmm. like fantastic to say the least. One person pops out and immediately just ducks right back in. But it's also fantastic here is the side of Cumberland on that last push towards the center. Just absolutely Ooh. crushed it. Brandon and Priestley, however, have something to say about it. Priestley finds one, looks for a second. It's not quite going to find it, but it is going to be KB picking, the, picking it up with a pistol of all things to try and just get this thing contested. But it's going to go right back into the pockets here for Cumberland, the only one here that had Slay who's going to get taken down. Down. And this post, I want, I want to keep calling it a post plan. But this defensive position they keep getting after gathering up on the hard point has been extremely difficult to deal with over and over again here. Three members of Cumberland on the point, and the Saints are not going to be able to contest this in the slightest. We're going to have to figure out where this next one's going. Sure enough, down in the southeast, and it is Priestley as well as KB who are going to be there first if they can hold this. Brandon going down, tumbling without anyone there to help him out, but it's still a long days of work required for the Saints. 98 now, almost getting to 100. Cumberland University is making them bleed for every single point. Again, both of these teams fighting to maintain the perfect record off of this game one already. Things are getting heated as they're all striving for that bomb, that car, I almost called it by its incorrect name. Cars in this game are basically just bombs waiting to be detonated, but he's going to have to be hiding behind that. The Saints are on the point. Cumberland University waiting for the opportunity to strike oh. like snakes in the snake den. Running through Honor, actually able to get through it, even deal a significant amount of damage to Enslaya, oh. but thankfully Priestley there is able to have his back. And the Saints are going to be able to hold on to this point for much longer, bringing them up closer to around 120 or 130 by the time that this is done. And Cumberland University just opting to hold on and wait to be able to defend this next position. They're going to be able to fight for it. The Saints are not anywhere to be seen on this next hard point. Cumberland University is going to start strong on it. I mean, that was major there for the Saints to get themselves back into this game. But now as the next point happens towards the west, um, it's already been picked up there by camp, by uh, honor as well. And the rest of the Cumberland squad are making their way over. Granted, Priestley did find the headshot to kind of start this thing off. Can they make themselves into a good position. Ooh, KB hello. immediately going to get franked as soon as he peeked the corner. And they're just having a hard time getting there. Camp finds himself a double honor and uh, Crayon going to finish it off as well. So that push knocked completely dead in its tracks. So far, half of this this a hard point going on over into Cumberland. Pretty well uncontested. Ooh, going to break double. them up to the 200, but Brandon, holy smokes, nice little double there to try and break this in here. But by the time he gets to the point, there's going to be only like scrap time. Absolutely. I think the Saints just need to realize that this point is more or less gone and just focus up on the next one. They are able to fight and gain a little bit more of it, but I wouldn't continue to commit more resources. They are able to find the straggler who's looking to move on to the next hard point in Brandon getting that pickoff and rotation and they're going to be making a beeline for this next one, and they're already scrambling on it, but Honor is able to spot one of them. The rest of them are able to pour on and find him as a result. However, he's going to be stuck behind this truck, not where you want to be, but the Saints are still going to be holding the pressure down, not letting off of it, but there's going to be a little bit of a shooting range. Saints are going to get gunned down 
from Cumberland University oh. on the point, and they are finally wiped off, leaving it completely clear for Cumberland University to find KB sliding around the corner, but he doesn't realize that there's one right behind him. That's when you check your corners too fast. You end up doing a full 360 and not seeing the guy right there with the gun in front of you. Brandon and Priestley and Enslay are all going down, trying to find their way to this point. And Cumberland University, if they're not going to be able to find the game off of this one, they're going to be very damn near close to it. And the Saints are going to have to pull off a miracle to even have a chance of winning this one. Yeah, they're going to get themselves a couple seconds. But right after that initial gunfight, like a little bit north of that hard point, just kind of went completely sour and against the Saints, it just fell apart from there. But granted, Saints, of course, have to play, like you're kind of saying, a little bit close to perfectly at this point here. There's only 25 points here for Cumberland to take the victory here in game number one. Saints are on the hard point, but can they win the fight? No, not as of yet. Everybody has been shredded. It is going to be Brandon trying to maybe make a last ditch effort to get towards this point. Going to be the first to arrive, but can he get there in time? He's going to find the one. Looks for the second in just a moment's time. They Ooh, gotta move. they got to move quickly. Only 10 seconds away from losing game number okay. one. Whip out the pistol, finish them down. Gets another one as well. The door has been open. The Saints have stopped the bleeding, but for how long? I want to believe, but having faith in moments like this just leads to disappointment usually. But if anyone's going to be able to pull it off, it's going to be the St. Clair State <laughs> varsity team. They're holding it down. They're holding it strong, but the nades coming in like snowflakes. But these ones blow up in your face. You don't want them to land on your tongue. The Saints are going to take the last two seconds. One, well, one second, I guess. 179 to 240. Cumberland University just needs 10 more seconds on the point. The Saints, I believe this point is a little bit more defensively sided as Cumberland University was able to move down so well previously as what well. gave them this huge advantage over the Saints to begin with. The Saints are able to start on it now. They'll be able to find the high ground and find the stragglers of Cumberland University. He's going to be rolling out the corner. He's not going to be able to find the final kill that he's going to need to get to put him down. But now Priestley is going to find the lineup. He's going to get the kill onto camp. And now it's just a matter of time. It's going to be contested, but the Saints are going to be able to get him off the point. But the rest of them are still pouring on. Saints just need 50 seconds left. With 25 left on this hard point, if they at least get it down to 10, they can guarantee that they're going to be able to remain in this game for the next hard point. They're going to have as many people on it as possible. The rest of them are rotating around to see if they can get anybody from Predator. But they're on the wrong side of the map now as they're coming up from behind. Priestley is going to have the opportunity to recognize since Ensley got them a little piece of information. But eventually, they are going to be able to siege the castle and take it down. They're going to get two seconds off of it, or three rather. But the Saints made them fight very hard for it. The next hard point it's gonna be looking to go the way of the seats potentially but even so the couple of universities are already finding their way over it it's all on this gunfight whoever wins this one is gonna be able to take it and probably take the game the seats are gonna be able to find their start. way it's a very excellent start danners and i'm hoping that they can maintain this and it's gonna be up to brandon how many picks can he find here before he gets exposed does manage to get a one for one trade saints on the point of course like you were saying can absolutely win right here final gunfight here for Cumberland university to possibly no! get this one kab with the double though is going to shred it let's get a 3k why don't, don't we keep on going three dare. points away and they're all gone i Saint can't Blair. believe We're it pull that one out of nowhere i cannot believe the saints just pulled that back from the brink i want to say i reverse cursed it i literally said i don't want to have faith because i'll end up disappointed and instead i'm left astounded they were able to bring it back from what 180 to 240 10 seconds was all Cumberland university needed and the saints are going to be the ones to hold on to their perfect record and i'd be damned do they deserve it so perfectly played by them in that first game so you and I have been around long enough that we oh. know that commentator's curse exists. So yeah. we, do the, we say the reverse of what we want happening. Non-intentional. Like, like I see on the Academy COD side, uh, Papa Prince in chat saying that uh, Danners had no faith in us. No, this was reverse commentator's curse and this was calculated. Yeah. And nicely, jump, nicely done, by the way. But <laughs> my goodness, fantastic job there for our varsity COD uh, team to be able to, in a dire scenario, oh, pull that one out More than nowhere. dire. Because there were so many gunfights, it just seemed like there was a little bit of map infamiliarity mm -hmm. to kind of start off that. My uh, head hurts after that. That one, especially that <laughs> the hard point that comes to mind is the one down the very, very south. Yeah. There was the little corridor up to the, just the north of it. And you, you saw come, a couple of the players like running through the doors and not realizing that, okay, actually, if the doors <laughs> open in a specific way, someone can just hide right there and mm -hmm. like mess up my day. And you, 
it happened quite a few times, at least in the middle of the game. Mm-hmm. But at the end, when it counted, they found the gunfights necessary to get the job done. And frankly, the opponents, Cumberland, just could not quite catch back up. It really felt like the Saints kind of learned the map in the middle of that one. I'm sure they were prepared enough going into the series. But just halfway through, it's like a, a switch flipped. I always mess up that saying. I end up saying swip flitched. Um, but... I got it right that time. But in any case, the Saints were able to just really find it from the end there. We said they had to play perfectly, and that's exactly what they did. And they're able to recover from such a dominant uh, dominant side from Cumberland. And uh, a, a comeback against a team like that is especially worth celebrating because it's not like they're doing that against any old team. We've mm. seen what they were capable of on the beginning of that map, and the Saints were still able to get their game plan together and execute it flawlessly when it really mattered. Yeah, they had a pretty significant lead at one point mm-hmm. or in that first half, and just something... I wouldn't want to even see the second half. It's like the last quarter of the yeah, game just kind of like flipped basically. on its head. Like the Saints kept it honest. They're probably like within 80 Mm-hmm. But it was still like a relatively convincing start to game number one there for Cumberland University. And then just something flipped um, and Saints just went absolutely clutch. They found their gunfights and specifically in the final gunfight, yeah. uh, KB oh finding God. the triple to get that. <laughs> recently promoted held, from Academy. Recently correct. promoted from Academy. Which and is good. absolutely frying over and over and over again. And it's definitely good to see. Absolutely. Now, as we already know, Call of Duty can be a little fickle when it comes to getting the lobby sorted. So we may be going to a break or maybe hopefully we'll be able to go right it into the like game. It sounds like it's going to actually happen in just but a quick moment. So perfect. I'm just going to chill with you here because we do also... Um, wanted to give a quick update because the game started pretty quickly. I was going to touch on it, but we were kind of talking about the uh, Varsity Valorant game earlier where our Valorant squad is going up to the, or trying to qualify rather for VCT Challengers. Mm -hmm. They did end up winning against the basement 2-0. Beautiful. So (laughs) the loser's bracket run continues. And from what it sounds like, that is going to still be on stream. The Knights Arena A stream is still going Knights to be covering our... Yes, uh, Knights <laughs> with a K is going to be uh, doing our match broadcast, but that's not for another half hour or so. Right. If there's one thing that I've noticed with those VCT games, is those are some late nights. So um, I'm glad our squad has a fantastic uh, stamina rating, to say the least, because oh, for sure. that is a long day I'm, I'm just casting it and i'm gassed right now or not yeah. casting valorant but just casting in general i'm gassed let alone competing so it big props everybody. Tough. yeah I, I mean i during the break i i coach owen kind of just walked in mm-hmm. looking around like a, a fish out of water so i figured he didn't look sad so i figured they must have won he looks exhausted <laughs> yeah more or less that's probably why he looks so confused just tired looking around like you guys still streaming i'm like yeah so <laughs> uh congratulations to the valorant team another success for them love that team they always put in so much work so much effort and you can feel like an electricity in the air especially around this time whenever our varsity valorant team has something going on it's like a, it's like an aura especially around the nexus everyone's just like on mm-hmm. edge ready to either celebrate or be upset you can definitely tell um, the people around the nexus are very partial to our valorant teams <laughs> absolutely like there's a, a lot of people who will come into the nexus and kind of watch and like they're happy to watch and whatnot but you can tell they don't necessarily understand what they're watching mm. with certain titles but for valorant Throw that out the window. Everybody knows what's going on, it seems like. Because, of course, it seems like we're definitely the Valorant school. But we do hear the game kind of loading up in the background here. Search and destroy on high rise. This time by here. Seems, of course, up one just barely after an absolute crazy game number one. And start things off just by trading a headshot with a nade. And one for one, three players left. Absolutely. High rise where dreams are made, where dreams go to die, where boys turn to men. A lot of memories on this map and many of them good, many of them bad. But we're going to see if the Saints are able to make some good ones here tonight as we have Search and Destroy starting up. The Saints are already off to a strong start, but it's going to get snatched away as Cumberland University is able to find two more Saints pre-sleeping the last one. Far from over still, if you know anything about our Call of Duty team, but able to kind of cinch it out there in the end. Cumberland University takes the first round against the Saints. I got to finish the job nice and quick there. So, I mean, like we saw in game number one, they started off extremely strong and nice little cheeky 
pitching you can go along the edge. I would not dare to try and <laughs> even get close to that area because me, I'd fall off. But these players move over into those areas like it is uh, just like second nature to say the least. But a nice little pick there from Crayon to get the kill in the Priest League, get them round number one. Now with the Saints on defending side of things, where do they prioritize? What do they look to do? So far pretty split, just two and two. Absolutely. And now we're heading up to the next round. Brandon is just peeking through, making sure nobody's getting through where they shouldn't be. He's like a, a firewall. And Cumberland University are unwanted ping packets. Forgive the nerd pun, but it's the best I could think of at the moment recently. Now just walking underneath the catwalk, finding anybody who dare show their face. And Slay getting the first blood for this round. And then no one's going to be able to trade that back with MKB. Finding a body, not a kill, but at least information to say the least. Honor reeling from the pain from the previous engagement. Brandon doing the same, but both teams are still holding strong, not trying to give up any ground to their opponents. Attack, or the bomb rather, is still so far away. We see it's gonna be Crayon with it way back in their spawn point still. And Cumberland's been extremely cautious, like you were mentioning. It's only Camp and Crayon now to try and make this happen, but we can see on the mini map just so much crossfire for either of these players. They peek out at all, and they will probably get smoked. We're going to see the attempt here. It is going to be KB going down. Crayon finds the first initial elimination. It's gonna be Anselaya on pursuit, trying to get the reef but they're too quick it looks like never mind it does Ooh. find the long shot they're on to crayon which means it is going to be up to camp to try and get this and it's not going to end up happening it looks like here as the scoreboard pops and it looks like we have ourselves some good old classic um Codcaster shenanigan right here <laughs> as uh Henslea is going to get credited for the, this is the kill that we saw the last kill as it must have been a timeout to get the Saints to win there. Mm, yep, and it looks to be now, of course, at the end of every round for Search and Destroy. You switch sides, the Saints are going to be moved over to attacking now that we're 1 1 in this series. With the way things are going right now, I feel like both teams don't want to be making any major adjustments. I think they just want to be playing a little bit cleaner. I feel like at the start of every round, somebody gets a little bit too overzealous with their play, and then they get they really suffer for it. I feel like if they just kind of clean up, clip the edges of these plays just a little bit more, they might be able to make things go their way. And just like I mentioned, Saints and Slaya and Overcent, just a little bit there. KB is going to find the trade, but the Saints are still going to be a little bit hesitant on where they want to go. On high rise, there's so many points, vantage points, where you can kind of watch through, but vantage points also serve as dish plates for your head, as Brent's head is going to get found, and taken clean off by Calvin University's finest. Now Priestley and the rest of his team trying to decide on a point they want to push. They're taking round inch by inch. Gunfights as well. Priestley now 2 of e 2 It's just a wingman scenario. If they can find the plant clean and then just kind of clean up and find another point to kind of uh, play defense from, I think it will be very favorable for them. And Saints, unfortunately, they do have to kind of get things moving here. They do, in fact, get this planted on me. So now that it's all in the pocket of Cumberland to try and make a move, and it's going to be one mode down. However, one -on -one. Calamity with a one-on-one -on -one now against KB. Of course, the bomb is down, so you may get the elimination, but you still have to defuse as well if you're on the side of Cumberland. KB does have a rough idea of where Calamity is in this instance. We can see the outline just ever so slightly. KB in a solid position, just keeping an eye. Nice little path there for Calamity to get towards the bomb location, but it looks the wrong way. Nice. And it was a 50-50, which way you going? And unfortunately there for Cumberland was not the right choice. St. Clair, up 2-1. Two, 2-1 one. Two, one is very comfortable when these matches are this close. It's just one game, but when you're playing somebody of this caliber, even being one game behind is scary because you know a single slip up means just getting snowballed and losing the series four games one by one. So Saints establishing that they're still in the series. They want to establish that dominance and potentially takes us to 3-1 to show that they've really figured things out. Calamity picking up the bomb and the momentum is underway. Do they want to carry forward? The Saints are going to have to do everything in their power to make sure that they can stop them like a brick wall. Now, 
Saints are just going to have to try to catch off any stragglers, and they're already finding good damage onto Honor on the underground. KB in one of these air lifts. Scaffolding going to be trying to find it. Oh. No, he's going to go down. Calamity's going to get the first blood for this round. Went for the fancy stuff, but couldn't clutch out this time. Bye. And Slaya is going to oh. fight it. It's going to cost him his life, however. So it's going to be Brandon up against Crayon and Camp to try and clutch out this one on two. And it definitely has the hot seat under him now. Of course, Bomb has just been planted. B site plants once again. And my bet, a one on three even for Brandon to try and clutch up here. But of course, there's no saving for economy. You, <laughs> it's just full send. Make it happen. Let's see what Brandon can do. Slowly creeping his way around, maybe ninja to fuse. We'll have to see what's not going to happen. Calamity is right there, and sure enough, Cumberland is going to secure this one. A much better attacking round compared to the last one, and we're going to tie this up too, too. Now I feel like I'm starting to recognize a pattern. This is just human psychology coming into play. I'm noticing they're kind of doing one for one, back and forth every single round, but. I feel like if a single team here is able to take two in a row, I think that might just be this game. I feel like the, the way that these are going is they're just adapting so well to the previous round, and then that's how it goes one for one, because they adapt, and then the next team adapts, and then the next team adapts. It's like an arms race, but once the other team can express that they're able to adapt to the adaptation, the opponent team will be in trouble for sure. It's definitely the more enjoyable way of doing it because sometimes we'll just see, oh, whoever's on defense wins and it just goes one, 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 one. <laughs> They're constantly adjusting, like we were saying. It is definitely entertaining, and KB is going to find the first initial elimination there onto Calamity. So now, Saints with the player advantage. How do they opt to go towards it? Looks like the B site, at least according to Priestley's positioning as of this moment. A little reserved, but has that long sight line as well in case either. Honor or Crayon here decide to make a move, which it does look like Honor is making their way on over. Right as I say that, Priestley moves too, so COD timing at its fine. So it looks like Priestley, Ooh. though, is going to find Honor. Takes them down. Four on two in the Saints' favor. KB finds camp and leads it uh -oh. all up to one. Well, and sure, Crayon got one, but he got immediately refragged, and the Saints are going to get that round. Now we're going to see if my prediction holds true. Three, two is a perfect opportunity for Saints to the next one, and then two more after that. But again, I feel like I'm a broken record here. Cumberland University is no small fry. They've demonstrated that even for a team as remarkable as our Call of Duty varsity team, that they are an opponent to be feared. So as they head to the next round, the Saints have to make sure they keep a cool head and don't let the momentum push them off of a cliff. Yeah, between what we've seen from their Valorant squad and now what we're seeing with the Call of Duty squad, I'm going around saying that I've never heard of these guys and, and they're uh, certainly that maybe I should because mm -hmm. they're keeping it extremely close here with our Call of Duty roster and they absolutely uh, frankly put on a clinic in the Valorant game. So just, if they keep that up, it's definitely going to be an insane matchup as we go along here. KB planted nice and close to the spawn, actually, of Cumberland University, where Corian did have the bomb in hand. It's going to be camp now. A little bit of chip damage onto one of the Saints. Not going to take him out. But KB, if he only knew, he's got to be hearing some of the foliage in the background. Just kind of being moved around here. Going to call that out to Priestley and then Slay at Priestley. It's going to find the one. Crayon trying to move this close to the B site. Maybe they can move on it. Good catch on to Priestley, though. Makes a move and immediately goes. The Saints are going to rotate on over to try and get a crossfire onto that B site, but it's actually catching KB as well. Two on three, make that a one on three. It's all up to Brandon once again here to try and hold on to this. He's got a bit of a long range shot here. He's going to have to really make a beeline towards that site to try and just stop this post plan from happening. Gets a little bit of damage, but you can see these high, like the the high rises, the, the scaffolding is just making okay, so difficult. He does manage to find one. Looks for another. Can he? He's getting damage on everybody, but not enough to kill. Okay, ah. Uh, okay. I really wanted my thing there to be okay, Brandon. Okay, Brandon. I was going to go crazy in the last <laughs> one, but it, it, you know, I was planning it. Didn't go my way, but hey, he was still putting on a great show. Because last time I saw Brandon in 1v3 situations, 
it ended up being a clip that we see around the Nexus all the time at these points. So I was getting ready for it, excited, but not going to go our way this time. Switching sides once again, the Saints are going to have the opportunity to play on the attacking side of things, and it seems that we're just going to be going tit for tat constantly on the search and destroy now. Well, if being in production has taught me anything, it's that the clips find you. You can't True. necessarily plan them out <laughs> often, and not at least in terms of in-game esports stuff. But now, Saints on the attacking side. Seems like both teams have had a decent amount of momentum on the attacking side as of the late. So let's see if our Saints can continue that pressure and maybe get themselves the fourth points on the board and bring this one closer to completion as we're in round seven here in this Switch and Destroy matchup. A little bit of a split. As of this moment, a little bit here at the side. A nice grenade, however, from camp is going to get the opening frag there onto KB. Take him down nice and quickly. Three on four now for the Saints to try and make a move. But Slay extremely close off the back point there. Very close to the positioning. There it is. He finds that opening. Brandon is going to crack open the B site for his team. And even so, that's just gonna force some rotations, force some movement, force the attention. Oh, uh -oh. you forgot what map you're playing on, buddy. Jumping off the map in an attempt to stay elusive. That's gonna be one more pickup for the Saints. 2v1 Calamity is in a calamitous situation. They got the plan, uh, but now, Really, fire is hitting the feet oh. here, and Slay is sliding through. He's gonna get the headshot down, and that's gonna be the round for Cumberland University. The defuse is found, and they are looking ready to snatch the series away from the Saints. And that's gonna be the combo breaker. There we go, a defensive win here for Cumberland University. And unfortunately, just catching the Saints player with the gun down. They went for a full sprint to try and go in full pursuit. By doing so, you can't even hit fire. And Calamity had what feels like all day. I know it's like literally just a second, but in, <laughs> in esports terms, that's all day to just open fire and get the, the head start there in that gunfight and just going to cause Saints to drop here for round number seven. And now back on the defensive side of things, which has not been favorable for whom the Zephyr has really had it for the most part, with the exception, of course, of Cumberland in that last round. But happens a little bit of a question but aggressive positioning here from uh honor camp I, oh, okay well Enslay is going to be the first victim of the gunfire on this round the violence won't stop though as priestly seems to be the next target camp is making this a very difficult push for the saints in fact playing a little bit more of an attacker side of things and a, a silent ninja roaming around the back site it's got two they're actually coming from behind. KB oh. trying to get the rotation, but Cumberland takes this next round and looks to be proving my theory correct. One thing I want to mention is like, of course there's a defender side, but it feels like both teams have to play attacking on this map because there's so many twists and turns and caverns and little hidey holes. Both teams basically have to stealth their way up to the points mm -hmm. and then just take the gunfights as they meet each other. The defenders don't have the luxury of holding onto both points and then rotating as necessary. They really do have to play into the attackers because if they're just trying to do that on the high ground peaking, then they can get headshot basically from anywhere on the map. Absolutely. Around that, uh, at least the bebop side anyway, there is still a decent amount of cover. So even if you're trying to get a long range defensive hold, it just doesn't work half the time. So we now have Saints on game points here. Or game, or rather, Cumberland is on game point. Try and tie the series back up one to one. And opening frags are going to get a bit of a trade here. Camp goes down, and so does Enslaya. As we just have the Saints charging on towards that B site. The bomb is on B site, but nobody currently has a hold of it. Honor does find Brandon. It's going to now be to Priestley and KB and try and secure this one. Priestley finds the one, looks for a second. It's going to be KB, actually. That brings us within one. One player left here. Crayon to try and deny. Nobody has bomb control until just now. Priestley is going to get this on down on the B site. But more pressure here on to Crayon. Looking to try and make their way around. But as of right now, Saints in a decent post plan have at least retreated a little bit. I'm, I'm really glad you were talking there because I was about to say Brandon looks locked in and he died maybe a second later. <laughs> uh, but I'm going to switch that statement over to be KB looks locked in the way they're moving. I just get the energy. Out. Yeah, but nope, never mind. I was correct. <laughs> locked in, ready to go. Not letting this victory get snatched out from the jaws of defeat. Four to five. Maybe I wasn't absolutely correct, but 
Cumberland University was able to get a significant momentum push. Now the Saints really have to focus up and once again lock in to prevent themselves from getting clutched out from this game too. Yeah, but of course it's on that defending side, which as of late oh, yeah. has not necessarily been in their favor. But we'll have to see as we go on through here. It seems like B site in general has just been the go-to. I don't think anybody has really even touched A, to be completely frank with you so far in this series. But we're too late to try as we do see them taking their time here. Saints are in the same defensive position that we've been seeing the last little bit from pretty much most of these squads. Honor, a little bit of a two and two hold. But nice and quiet to start things off here in these first couple seconds. Looks like they might be trying to sacrifice their honor for victory. And I mean the player, not <laughs> the concept, but going to be able to retreat back now. And the Saints are just going to be on an information gathering spree, just seeing whatever scraps they can find. Even just letting themselves get shot up a little bit would be helpful. But you see, able to find Crayon and put an end to him in fact, it, uh, eventually. Calamity is going to pick up the bomb and looks like they're trying to secure maybe not a single point at the very moment, but they are just they're like pawns moving up on the chessboard, just trying to secure ground and making it threatening for the Saints to try to push into them. But Priestley is really feeling the heat now, uh, taking some bullets there from Cumberland University. And Slaya and Priestley holding onto this right side. The bomb is going down on B. The pawns slowly moved up enough for the Knights to get onto the point. Yeah, as soon as that thing got planted, however, the Saints started moving in. It's going to be Priestley charging on fourth, looking for one of them. Brandon is going to fall. Calamity finds them. But we do have the one player right on the point itself is going to catch Priestley off guard. Two on two, one on two now, as it's just been one after another. It's going to be all up to Enslea to try and take care of Calamity and get this bomb defused. Calamity honestly just needs to run for the hills for the most part, but he's been very good at being elusive once this thing has been planted. As we see, taking to the, like, the underground portions of this just killing off as much time as possible. Now we're never spotted oh, and never. taken down. Cumberland University are going to tie this series up at one. They are able to take this game to very well against the Saints. Four to six, an impressive score line. Now both teams have had their perfect records tarnished. It's not going to be a victorious day for any team completely. Both of them <laughs> suffering losses in their own right. But at the end of the day, they still both have two more games to go to at least take the rest of the series. Yeah, that's a nice streak you have. Uh, I think I'll take it. Not if I don't take yours too. So just completely nullifying the, the perfect season in terms of map mm -hmm. drops. But of course, there is still win records to be decided here. And as we are seeing, we have quite the back and forth series here. That first game could have gone essentially either way, like less than 10 points away from Basically. either way. Yeah. It was what, like 250, 240? So it was an extremely close one. And then even that search and destroy was close, but you can kind of get the sense that as of right now, Cumberland University has just that tiny little bit more confidence, tiny mm -hmm. little bit more control mm -hmm. on the scenario here. And we're going to be seeing high rise once again here, this time for control for game number three. So if it's a map thing, I know the Saints are kind of trying to practice these maps, but if it is a map right. thing that's kind of holding them back a little bit right now, it could be troublesome because they did not exactly look comfortable out there. Yeah, like that that is kind of the point I was going to bring up. Um, the way I saw them taking those engagements, it seems, again, like they were kind of grasping at straws in some situations. Of course, they had their moments of brilliance, you know, flashes of genius where you could see that they kind of just gripped it and their, their gamer genius and kind of kicked in a little <laughs> bit there. They're able to just pick it up and take it running. But again, overall, it felt like that they weren't completely comfortable on it showed in their gameplay. So going back to high rise for this next game, I'm not too sure how it's going to fare for them. But to be fair, I'm not too fair. It's not too sure how it's going to fare for Cumberland University either. Both <laughs> of these teams are probably going to be adapting to the map, to each other, to the game state to make sure that they can keep a cool head and make sure that they do what they need to do. And again, Call of Duty, some lobby issues usually, but whether or not we go to a quick break, I still want to at least bring up how you think our states are going to fare in this next map. I mean, at least now they have like a little experience on the map. I'm not saying they've never had experience, because of course they're playing matches and scrimming and if ranked is even in Call of Duty right now, I can't 100% sure. <laughs> you never know. You can never know. You know, a core feature that should be there on release. But um, in terms of high rise itself, at least you kind of got the gist of it. You kind of know like what goes where. I, I'm keeping it in extreme layman's terms, but you've got the one map now, and 
I mean, control just kind of feels like search and destroy, except with respawns. Basically, <laughs> in, in, yeah. If I were to explain in layman's terms, so being on that like, point long enough feels like it, like two D fuses, basically. Basically, yeah. yeah, yeah, just with a couple checkpoints if you do happen to get knocked out. But mm -hmm. um, we'll have to we'll have to see the state of least. I I know it's not necessarily the most uh, detailed, most <laughs> easy answer, but. We'll definitely have to see. But one thing that is also going to be happening in a very, very short time, of course, we had mentioned it a, a few times um, earlier in the breathers, but mm -hmm. uh, Varsity Valorant, that is still going to be happening in just a moment's time, if I do recall correctly. Um, Knights Arena, a knight with a K, with a K of course. Um, Missy we'll underscore this 30. time. Knights Arena underscore A. <laughs> that's why i'm here ladies and gentlemen there we go no that's why i'm here but our team is playing and they're having a very strong run through the lower bracket so far absolutely and it just gets tougher and tougher and from what owen was telling us earlier or coach owen rather mm -hmm. um this one should be a bit of a tougher one they were confident with the last two this one sounds a little nerve-wracking uh but their vct challengers life depends on it so that's going to be entertaining to follow as well but for now, I think it is going to be time to take a very, very quick break while we do some classic Call of Duty <laughs> lobby hopping. But don't go anywhere. We see how crazy close this match has been so far. You don't want to see the conclusion of it. Well, the COD gods have blessed us. It's apparently not going to be taking too long to go between lobby to lobby today, I say that, and if it goes to game. 
okay, you know, you know how things are going to be going. But of course, we're hopping in the game number three. It's going to be high rise control. As we hop on into it, it's going to be our Saints on the attacking side to start things off. As of right now, it seems like B is the way to go. As Saints currently already have their initial checkpoint on this one going to be contested, however. So it is not going to be taken for free, but they get a little progress early. They find that progress and they're going to be holding on to it. They will take the first hit. Or did they? Okay, no. If they did, they're able to secure the first one. They just need two more of B and a healthy three more on A. But it's not going to be looking too healthy in the lives department there as a lot of people just went down thanks to KD. And now, Bonner and Cam Crayon all finding marks of their own three quick deaths for now for Cumberland University taking down the Saints like it's nothing but Priest is going to get that revenge one alongside KB. Saints kind of losing sight of what's really important here for a brief moment. Not even able to find a touch on the point until just a second ago. They're going to be able to find two now. And Saints are holding on to this one. Right. And this is what I was wondering that I didn't. One of the three oh, touch on the breaks. We see the grenades just coming in. Team killing. <laughs> Team killing once again here. But uh, it does look like the control points are basically the exact same locations as the search and destroy points. So, especially now, as we see the Saints just tearing on through, they look much more comfortable here. B point has been taken. The Saints are basically spawn trapping them at this point here. They are, in fact, in full control. It's just a matter of time before that A point goes on over, unless they can get some long range shots, get some nades to cook their way. But as of right now, Priestley and the rest of the Saints are absolutely frying through the defensive line and are going to take game or points rather number one point one goes towards the st Clair college and it was scarily convincing the saints completely dominated that first round mm. Cumberland university i hope they have an answer to the very strong established statements the saints just made and that they're saying they want this next game and they want it fast although we saw a pattern during the search and destroy true and it was Attacking sides seem to be the way to go. Yeah. And with these locations being in the exact same spots, that also correlate towards control. As of right now, granted my sample size is literally one game, but yes, as of this moment. But we'll have to see how it ends up going through. Zane's gonna just charge on through and three or now it's gonna be KB. Almost was in the line of fire against like three or four. He is going to take to the high ground, try and get noted dodge, but with two players so far from Saints dropping, it, it's a little bit of a rough start, but they're going to try and hold the contest here on the game. It looks like Cumberland University is kind of even taking these points faster than the Saints did, but it is going to eventually get extinguished by the Saints. They don't want to lose that convincingly that quickly. So Cumberland University getting a little bit of a stop put on them temporarily, but it looks like they're coming back with a vengeance. 55 seconds on the clock, no pips to be found, but they do at least still have gas left in the tank from how they're moving around the map. They still want to fight. They still want to get those kills and the Saints still have to tread lightly to make sure that they don't give anything up to the University. Priestley even still fighting to bite back against Clamity, who was shooting him in the back. Nade's going up for Brandon, but now the University finds their first pip onto B, and it seems like the Saints don't have anybody there to contest it, so Brandon's gonna have to make a parkour adventure over, land on his head like a Goomba, but unlike Mario, he's got a gun, and he has to pull, use that to put him down. Ultimately, 40 seconds left. Coming to the University with one pip on B, it's still anybody's game. Okay, Grant gonna try and make their way over to this B site. They couldn't be able to take care of one and Slay was there, but could not take him down. So now this could be opening they need to maybe try and get that second tick onto B site. They only have about 30 seconds of, uh, of game time left to go before the defense has technically been secured. Priestley going to go one for one here. Goes down rather quickly. And A not being touched, but as of right now, that is going to be that second tick now on to the B site. Continuing to make progress slowly but surely. The Saints is going to be KB actually who has the flank, but it is on to two of them. Finds one. Can he find an additional one? It's kind of chaotic towards that site, but it is just going to be secured. We're going to get some more time on the clock here for Cumberland to try and take that A point. They just got a double kill as well. Can they return the favor to the Saints and get themselves into a bit of a spawn trap? It might not be much of a favor depending on how you look at it. A gun fight and 
complete and total warfare is anything but, especially when you're fighting this hard over these control points. The Saints are going to be looking to return the slight, the attack, the offense that Cumberland University just sent their way. And the Saints are going to be pouring all of their attention now onto the east side because they have no reason not to. They're able to hold both sides pretty convincingly, but now that they just have one, potentially things are going to be Okay, then. Saints for a second there were kind of stuck in a spot trap, but they have broken out. They're in decent position. Lives are basically even. So, so far, so good for them as long as they can correlate nicely around that A site. The only um, roamer of sorts is going to be Enslay here with maybe a possible flanking maneuver. But no, he is going to end up getting picked up there by Clampy. So, Saints down by two, three lives now. And these eliminations are not going to be doing them any favors here. And then, Unfortunately, their priest is going to run into two. Now, no response remain for our Saints here. One more run. The Saints leads okay. here by one. As Leia finds two, though, this could be the Let's opening go. they need. The time is ticking down. It may not even go to lives at this point here. Ten seconds left. 10 seconds is all the Saints need with just every inch they have left. Oh, no lives remaining, but Cumberland oh. University is able to take them out and take the game just by tracking down the remaining Saints. They weren't able to get out of dodge fast enough. So Cumberland University able to find the stragglers and take the game off of those kills. And the time was right there, but of course there was the alternative win condition of just playing out the lives. And unfortunately, the Saints were able to defend, but it cost them those lives just like five seconds away from being able to get it. So definitely a heartbreaker here. The attacking side continues to be the one scoring the points so far here on high rise, but still plenty of game ahead of us here. Of course, first to three here for this control game mode. KB is going to start things off swinging with the initial pick on the camp. And now the Saints looking to kind of establish the fact that their first round wasn't a fluke. We've seen both attackers now win a game successfully, but the Saints did so pretty convincingly. And I think they want to repeat that in this next one. Able to try to go for a next push onto B potentially two. Uh, we have both Saints, one of them going down now, and the rest of Cumberland University actually rotating, leaving A behind. They recognize the Saints. All they want is B. Everybody wants B. It's such a good point. You get a nice view. So why wouldn't she push it? The Saints are going to be able to kind of come back from that third push there and find some footing and play on the point, hoping to get this first pip taken. Got the explosions everywhere, but unfortunately for the Saints, they're going to fall off that point momentarily. KB, however, going to fight um, Honor and take care of them there. Is this going to make it to that first initial tick? It's pretty close, but not quite there just yet. It is going to end up having a So Saints getting a little bit of a checkpoint here in this B site, but still just about a minute of play here. Lives-wise, this is looking much better here for the Saints. Just absolutely frying through the Cumberland University lives as of this moment. That's Leia and Brandon fighting a couple. And Leia is going to end up going down. Brandon on hot pursuit trying to chase somebody down. Not quite to point to get them this time by, but while they are playing this TDM kind of style, the points have been basically untouched until this point here, as we do see one more. There's three Saints actually right on there as Camp finds it up. Saints are flying and flying around the map. The Hoki in an effort to get out of that little bit of a firefight. He fell off the point, but now he's back looking to secure it, but no, Cumberland University actually is getting the hip destroyed a little bit. They're able to reduce some of that progress. The Saints basically just have one more push in them left to take this B side, and you're not gonna be able to get out of a win out of the lives like Cumberland University was able to. Time is now frozen. This time is now theirs. But the headshot through the wall is going to take down Priestley. The Saints are able to secure B side in the meantime. And all the attention on everybody in this map has turned over to A. I mean, they didn't have a whole heck of a lot of uh, leeway there, the way that timer was going, but they didn't get the job done. Now it's onto the A site, or what's more probable is just onto the live state. As six lives now on the board here for Cumberland University, Saints with nine. So we could very well see a TDM 
um, win condition here for the Saints the way this one is going, because right now they don't have really anything <laughs> in regards to, to uh, progress, as we do see no more respawns remaining. Now, someone was playing the floor in lava there by the helicopter, yeah. but manages to get the job done. Time is ticking, though, 25 seconds left to go. They do end up finally diving onto that A point. Got to try and make Crumper come to them. I feel like, yeah, that's the play there. Just send one on the point and then just have the rest of the team roaming around to try to find anybody who dares to Oh, no. Oh, my God. The grenade found Brandon, but it also found his teammate. Now it's a 2v4 with one extra life. The Saints don't have respawns anymore either, but they don't need him because the Saints are able to take down Come the University for this round two. Saints just need one more to take the series. Oh, my goodness. What is it with nades in Call of Duty the last two days? I've been absolutely... Um, lethal, I'm glad to I get to say it. the least. It's just been absolutely brutal as we see Priest again the final elimination there. But yeah, 2-1 now into the favor of St. Clair. However, now Cumberland gets to attack. And again, this streak of just attackers winning here on high rise is just continuing um, more and more to say the least. Trying to see if anybody's really standing out in terms of KD, but to be fair, everybody's kind of playing pretty even. The closest thing I'm seeing to a standout is really Brandon right now, because it is 20 and 13, as we see some really early kills here for the Saints as we get three on the board, try and get ourselves into a defensive position to maybe stop one of these points from going down. It's become one of my favorite sayings recently. It's anybody's game. I like saying that, and it's always true most of the time, at least. Um, but even if it isn't, I'll say it anyways, but this game is definitely one of those cases where it is anybody's game. I feel like Cumberland University still has a lot left in them, and they're showing how much they have by putting it all on the point, getting the revenge kill for his teammate that just went down in front of him. CLU is able to take one pick at B already, and looks like they're going to try to take another one. Nate's coming out. Going to find that kill there, but not before they find another pick. 50 seconds. They already have two. It looks like Cumberland University is coming out strongly to start this round. Absolutely. And then lives-wise, not necessarily the biggest of gas. Four is pretty like decent, don't get me wrong, but not as egregious as what we've seen in some rounds so far here in this control matchup. We do see Brandon in perfect position. Find one, looks for a second, Ooh. and he will absolutely clutch up with a nice one. Getting okay. a 30, absolutely will. Fantastic play here from Brandon to hold that corridor and just deny that A site. Granted, there is some progress being happening now towards that B site, but they just lost Saints. a lot of lives trying to do for a bit of an over-aggressive extent. But at the same time, so are the Saints. They've lost quite a few lives as well. Priestley is going to find himself the double in a KB now in a bit of a collision course here with one of the players right on the point itself. Priestley does go down, but back and forth, back and forth, one after another. A crazy start to this uh, fourth round here. But this B site does end up going down. A is always seems to be like chopped delivered to these teams. They don't yeah. have anything to do with it. Always favoring B and then coming back to A like it's homework. But I can understand why. First, you're starting underneath the giant oil tanker, just waiting to be blown up. And then you have to deal with a helicopter pad right above you. That's more high ground for the defenders to steal. But nice. next player taking two lives just for the hell of it. Now, Cumberland University with a significant life disadvantage. They have seven lives left and the Saints are holding on to 11 comfortably and they only have 30 seconds left to take the point. Had to time that correctly there to make sure the timing was right. Yeah, not much time left on the clock, but also not very many lives here for this side of Cumberland. They might do a push as four, but there's a good chance that they might have only two respawns or three respawns at the end of their next push. But shot after shot going through, no progress on this A site. If anything, it's the Saints being mowed down. The lives are even essentially now in this matchup. It is going to be, okay, now it's even completely six. Now one more of these grenades again are just making things messy. Oh, no. Saints, no response remaining to try and defend this. All of the Cumberland members have made their way towards this A site. You're going to reach like three of them and it's not going to go in their favor. And the time runs down. That is going to be the capture on that zone. And we are going to a round five here in game number three. Cumberland University is absolutely in the zone right now, taking such a close round against the Saints.
tying up yet another series as we're heading into the final round. Next team to take a round will be heading into the potentially final round of this final game of the series with a huge momentum boost, huge morale boost behind their back, but it's all gonna come down to this round, whether or not they're gonna be fighting with a smile on the face or gritting their teeth and grimacing in fear of what might be coming next. Now, what I'm wondering is who actually gets to attack in this one, because normally for control, the tiebreaker happens for, uh, for defense. But in this case, you kind of don't want to be on the defensive side of things. And sure enough, the Saints are going to be backed on defense for this one. So nobody has won on defense at all here in this game so far. And the Saints, if they want to win here in number three, they need to make that uh, pattern stop right here right now. And they need to make sure that they do it with not even a doubt of hesitancy in their mind. They're going to have to fight hard if they're going to want to have a hope against Carmel University because they've shown that if you hesitate even for a second, they will steal the round away from you without you even realizing it. Had two super close rounds already taken from them. The Saints recognizing that and hopefully going to be playing a lot more heads up and able to adapt to the pressure that comes into their Saints. But now Saints 24 to 19, even getting a kill streak, not gonna be able to find anything with it though. But the Saints are still looking pretty convincing with 25 seconds left. Cumberland University has not even had the opportunity to find the point. It's like a moment on the point yet. 15 seconds left. The Saints are absolutely dominating them right now. Yeah, what on earth just happened? The switch has been flipped and now the Saints have just been impenetrable. The cruise missile can't even Oppenheimer kill out of their <laughs> onto the Saints. Uh oh. And it is finally gonna be KB going down here after a headshot from Calamity, but it's actually gonna be onto the A point. They're just trying to stall out the clock here, and the Saints Great one, they needed it most. Are gonna be able to hang on on defense and secure the win in game number three. It's it's confusing. Like the series was so close, basically right up until that point in which it just felt like a regular Saints COD match where it was just them doing what they do and winning pretty quick. I'm not sure what they said to each other, what they did, but it ends with them taking that round and as a result taking that game as well. Sheesh, Brandon with 30 and 18, Jeez. KB going as high as 35, and just big kills all around there for St. Clair. And, I mean, it's not the end-all, be-all, but we did see a couple of those rounds where lives was definitely a factor. Mm -hmm. But now we get to go to Skid Row, if I do recall correctly, for another hard point matchup here. <laughs> I was going to say, it's my, I guess my guess is as good as yours, right? More but, or less. Uh, <laughs> Skid Row, one of these matches I think we saw yesterday during one of the CCL games, but mm. I saw exactly what it looks like. It's one of those things where as soon as I see it, I'll remember, but off the top of my head, I cannot necessarily remember how the Saints performed on it, but oh yeah, wait a minute, this is Saints Varsity, it was probably a 3-0 anyway, we can assume <laughs> domination, but... Uh, We'll have to see again how this one goes here with Cumberland, who has been showing to be a absolute massive thorn in the side of the Saints. Extremely close games all around, mm -hmm. and it should be an exciting one. And while we're commuting with the Call of Duty lobby gods, uh, let's just figure out how we're confident the Saints are going to be able to take this game, or if we think that Cumberland University is going to be able to take them back. Looking at how the Saints finished off that last round, I feel like that they've really found their footing. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, they found their footing on a map they're not playing on anymore. Right. But I think even just the momentum that they're getting, they're going into this last game 2-1. They, they won their last hardpoint game in a very close comeback. Mm -hmm. I feel like they might be feeling good about themselves. It might be high up and even that might be enough to get them the edge in the series against Cumberland. I'm pretty confident that they're going to be able to take this one. And he definitely makes good points, especially with these games being as close as they have been. Mm -hmm. I have to start wondering when is the point that Cumberland starts playing mad? If they start playing mad. Because a lot of these games are absolutely within reach and then for it to just immediately like just go sour like that. Like mm -hmm. your attacks have been absolutely flawless at entire control. And then all of a sudden, it just gets absolutely stomped on, <laughs> to be completely frank with you. So, like, mm -hmm. How does that not shake you, to say the least? However it shakes them, I hope it shakes them in a way that's for the better. Um, I do feel like I've definitely seen the Saints playing mad a couple of times. Mm -hmm. I don't want to call it out, but I feel like 
it, especially in that moment, where I said Brandon's locked in, or just I wanted to say that. I could, I could just sense that the Saints are angry, and I think they did end up winning that round. They did ultimately end up losing Search and Destroy then, but I feel like when both of these teams can tap into that Hulk potential and just kind of <laughs> let loose and just kind of play like they're playing a, an unranked lobby and just play egotistical, play aggressive, and play like nobody's watching, I feel like that's when you can see the magic sparkle and shine, and that's who's going to ultimately be able to take the series. Absolutely, and it's one of those things as well where I'm kind of glad that our team kind of counterbalances itself mm -hmm. because we do have Brandon, for example, who, like, I don't want to say gets emotional, but he can get, like... He can yell. He can... He gets into it, to say mm -hmm. the least, and whether that's for the positive or the negative, it can sometimes come out with anybody, to be fair. Mm -hmm. But then you just have the stone-cold, like, killer of Priestley, where he's just, like, no emotion in the slightest, just absolute machine. So, able to kind of, like, yes, you got the, you get the energy of somebody who's getting excited, mm -hmm. but then you get the down-to-earth and strategic, like, um, collective control. Zen. The Zen, yes, exactly, yeah. of Priestley, and it's uh, it's a good thing to say at least because you kind of get the best of both worlds as long as one doesn't get too powerful over the other. Absolutely, literally the yin and yang. And exactly. Speaking of which, the uh, Call of Duty lobby gods have refused to answer our <laughs> prayers, so it sounds like we're going to be throwing it to a break in just a minute. But before we go, I want to ask you because I don't think you answered. Do you think that Cumberland's taking this next game, or do you think the Saints really have them on lock? I tried to dodge a question, and it did not happen. No, but no you're completely correct, though. Um, yeah, so I, was, I talked about them playing mad, mm -hmm. and at this point, I think they are... I think they're at that point. I think this is going to be the final game. Three, okay. three to one victory for the Saints. Uh, I mean... Just the math side of my brain has recognized the pattern where they keep going one for 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 one. So the math tells me Cumberland University takes this game, so I'm kind of inclined to agree. But we're going to have to figure that out as the lobby gets spun up, which is not right now, but it will be very soon. So hopefully we'll still have you around when the action comes back. So don't go anywhere. We'll be seeing you guys very soon.
ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Thank you for joining us once again. I told you it wouldn't be that long. And we are in our potentially final game of the mm -hmm. night. We have our Call of Duty Varsity team versus Cumberland University. And this has definitely been one of the rare Call of Duty games where it's deathly close. And it's hard to say one way or the other how this is going to go. But we are on hard point once again. Saints are up 2-1 against Cumberland University. First team to get 250 takes this game. If Saints win, they take the series. University has a lot of work on here. Yeah, I'll tell you what, this, the fact that we're in, like, we're in Nace and we're getting matches that are already competitive, normally that doesn't happen. Normally we don't see the Saints get challenged at all until, like, maybe the last couple of rounds of playoffs. But mm -hmm. that is kind of one of the beauties of this new Nace Star League Super Conference is we're getting put up with these absolute killers in this uh, early stages, as we see Priestley going on a tear, including yet another stray nade, finding a team <laughs> seems to be the name of the game so far this week. But off the initial hard point, Saints basically headed from second one, have been able to tear through. They seem very comfortable here. It's a lot more comfortable, comfortable than they were on the first two maps, although this is basically how things started out with Cumberland University. The first hard point even already got up to 250, but we saw how the Saints were able to take things back. So, especially when these two Titans are clashing, it is very foolish to say one way or the other who is going to be taking the series just based off of how things are off. But it is definitely looking strong for the Saints, regardless. Yeah, two very, very strong captures initial, or initially here in this fourth game 30 seconds left onto this point but the saints just been gathering up everything next to no dead time as of this moment right now two players for the saints still on point brandon able to defend so again it looks like it's going to be an early evacuation here for cumberland to try and go towards the south and i would assume get the hard point that's supposed to pop up down there sure enough yeah right at the very very south of the map is where it will be kb going to clean up the uh the scrap time and we have Calamity on a possible, or no, it's Camp rather, in a collision course with the Saints. And two of the Saints are going to, one of the Saints are going to fall, Camp will fall as well after another TK in this matchup. But Cumberland does manage to secure this point pretty nicely, have held the initial push there for the Saints. And if the Saints want to get this anytime soon, we're going to have to wait. But we have a flanker coming in Camp. Absolutely. Now the Saints, or rather, Cumberland University finally able to find their first two points in this hard point. 30 seconds left on it, but Enslaya mowing them down, not making it easy for them at all. Calamity, once again, in a calamitous situation. Absolutely just clawing at the Saints, trying to get on the point. KB is going to get found right in the stomach. Perfect shot lined up. Camp points his way on the point and finds one more Saint to take down. 35 for them, 10 seconds left on the point. Preston is probably going to go their way, and they're already securing the next hard point. Yeah, already there in the northeast portion of the map. We do see Crayon and Honor there. It is going to be Brandon who's going to be the first one from the Saints to be there, but wisely hanging on. And in fact, if the Saints can clean through, that'd be crazy, but Camp with a fantastic double kill immediately shuts that pressure down. If you can find one more, that would just be the icing on the cake. But we do see the Saints upon the respawn are going to try and charge on through it, through the stairwell, but it is going to be two players from the Saints initially getting taken down. So this push has kind of been cut short for at least the time being. It's been one one for one for one, but this is just benefiting Cumberland as they've been able to just continue to have one or two players on that hard point at all time while winning these gunfights as hard as they are. This game's going to be tied up real quick. Swinging that door wide open, KB with the button, he could not find his way onto the point. This point seems to be going for Cumberland. They already seem to abandon ship, just playing the field, sticking around the map to see where that hard point is. Landing right in front of Priestley, he's able to get his mark and find his way on the next point. And like I said, things started strongly for the Saints, but already Cumberland University 87 points to match St. Clair's 115. But the Saints are pretty strong on this point now. Gunfight is going to take down Enslay, which is going to make things a lot easier for Cumberland University. Camp earning his five killing spree, but it's not going to matter if they're not going to be able to find him. Saints have full control over this Western hardpoint as soon as it's spawned, and only now is Cumberland starting to make any sort of contest for it. Two, three Saints in position. Priestley seems to have the angle there. Right to the 
side of the point itself. Just some decent side lines and KD even too. As we are going to see the cruise missile, it is actually going to take care of Priestley. So with the door open, that is going to now be the rest of the Carbon squad trying to make a charge through, but there is still two Saints in position. It's going to be KB who moves on up and then two more eliminations here for the Saints have been able to stop that push dead and get the remainders of this time. Saints know it's good for them. They'd abandon this point now and just make their way over to the next one because last time they let Cumberland University reinforce a point, they were not even able to touch it. But it seems to be the case now. Cumberland found their way to the point. Brandon's going to be able to find a straggler, however. And on the bottom side of the map, Brandon's able to find another one as well. They're all making a rush for the center of the map, able to try to get on the hard point, but it's reinforced pretty hard. It's going to be a hard fought battle. Information is going to be down, but KB is going to be taking them down to get allow it and Slayer is going to be able to get the revenge kill onto Calamity. Hole in the wall, quite literally, Crayon is going to be peeking through to see if they can find any saints. Through Pre Priestley is going to get taken down, and the company Mercy is still holding strong to this point. With 25 seconds left, the saints have not made a single point off of it. Yeah, they're not going to get really anything, it seems like, at this moment. They're going to have to try and go next, which is looking like it's going to be in that northwestern side. Right. As of this, as we'll see momentarily. Yeah, sure enough, exactly where KB is. So, if they can hold this position, they'll be looking good for this next point. But it's still going to be extremely scary. This game looking pretty similarly to the last hard point that we saw during game number one. Only 20 separating these teams as of this moment. Two here. That was a missile coming Maybe in just a moment. Sure enough, it's going to be Priestley who's going to open up the eliminations there with that missile. Takes care of camp and is at least going to stall out this uh, counterattack here from Cumberland. And with that slay and the rest of the Saints in position as well, fantastically taking them down one after another. And this push is going to be stopped at KB almost losing his life from cross map against Calamity. The nade will find its way in. It does. Doesn't find his life, however. KB just wants to stick to the ground, but he's not going to have the luxury as Cumberland University is able to push him. They are able to take over this hard point, which we have not seen very often on this series. Once a team usually lands on that point, they usually hold on to it for the rest of the lifespan. For but the most part, yeah. Yeah, Cumberland's able to take this one over, but the Saints looking to fight for the bottom one. Only having Priestley down there, though. Uh, Cumberland University has a numbers advantage. All right, lap number two, all the way back down towards the south. We do see Cumberland already in position. Priestley is going to get out shot there. Fantastic shot from the camp. But it does get traded out in the end as Brandon finds one. The Saints on the doorstep of contesting this thing. They want to make sure that they are decisive. And sure enough, they manage to find one by two. But at the same time, here comes uh, Cumberland finding some additional shots for themselves as well. Headshots galore here. Lots of eliminations across the board. But eventually, the Saints have been able to fight their way back onto this point, get past that 200 mark, and will make it so that Cumberland don't have much wiggle room. They have to essentially play close to perfectly in Ooh. order to keep themselves in this game. The Saints can't win on this one, but they absolutely can on the next. I wish you didn't say that, because last time you said they have to play perfectly, they played perfectly. So Cumberland University might actually just meet up to that task and might be able to take this game right out from under the Saints nose because this is not a far cry from the situation we saw in the first part of the play. 174 to 235 Saints are barely just 20 away or not even just 15 away from winning this series. They need to just find their opportunity but oh, with this hard point where it is, Cumberland University is not going to give them that chance. As I say, I'm a sucker for punishment and a good show. So as of right now, it's kind of looking like we're getting a little bit of both here as we have a good little contest here for a second until KB does get mowed down. So does that slay a crayon from behind. Actually, that fight did not get anything. It's going to be honor now to try and get some additional eliminations here. Brandon is not sprinting, going to get taken down. KB though with the refrag and slay is right there, going to get dropped. However, honor having a good uh, point here, getting a bunch of eliminations for himself. May not necessarily have the standout in regards to the... Oh my, we have ourselves a quick little uh, little crash. It does look like, well, classic God, wouldn't it be? But, of course, that matchup was definitely close in its own right. Hopefully, we'll get that back up and running for you as shortly as possible. But mm -hmm. some things, unfortunately, do end up going down. Things like that happen pretty often sometimes, especially with Call of Duty seems to be a common theme. But just the way things are going, there's a point that was just sitting on my t the tip of my tongue I wanted to bring up. Like even in a game mode like Hardpoint where there aren't rounds, 
they seem to still be trading rounds. Like one team would completely dominate a point, next team would completely dominate the next one. It seems that Cumberland was completely dominating that next one. I would just assuming that they were probably going to take it up to maybe 220, and then there'd be 220 that Saints 230. It would have all fallen down on that last point. So however that ended up or will end up, not mm -hmm. exactly sure what happened with that lobby. We'll probably throw it to a break to see what might have been going on with that. But I just got the see. update from the back room. So unfortunately, there was a little bit of a technical problem, and we're not going to be able to get this one back up. Unfortunately. The good news, however, is that was a Saints W. Beautiful. Um, pretty much it sounds like from the last hard point or the... Not the one it crashed at, but the one after. Um, so I was right. It's basically, it was basically <laughs> Saints in control after that. So cool. a little bit of heartbreaking. Couldn't see the conclusion of it. But unfortunately, the tech issues definitely strike every once in a while. And to be, uh, to be fair, for Call of Duty, the fact that it took so long for a tech issue is kind of surprising. But yeah. it is a absolutely A-OK. -okay. Um, again, thank you for everybody for um, tuning in and everybody for working here today. But... That means that's uh, Cumberland on uh, on our night out with you here on Valentine's Day. I guess we're just Thanks going to split, we're going to split the bill evenly. It took us out in, <laughs> we took us out in Valorant, but we did end up getting you in Call of Duty. So yeah, there we go. I believe it. You know, split things evenly, right down the middle as it should be. Um, I already even see one of the players in the chat. So shout outs to you. A completely beautiful mm. games, well played from everybody involved. It was a complete honor to watch. Pun intended. An honor to hey. watch you guys playing. So thank you so much for joining us here tonight unfortunate how it ended up but uh at least in the uh broadcast side of things not able to catch the ending but it was a joy watching every second up until that point so we're going to be able to wrap things up tonight mm -hmm. what do we have on the docket tomorrow if you remember so tomorrow game day Fortnite. shall yeah, game day shall be returning yes i'm gonna try and do this in chronological order so i can just uh, remember it off the top R6. of my head but yes we do start off the day seven o'clock with Rainbow Six Siege mm -hmm. once again, assuming no reschedules. Of course, all these matches and times are completely pending because we know how many times people love to FF us with five minutes before the match. Mm -hmm. But that's the plan anyway, is to have R6 at 7 o'clock, and then we have two other matches happening at 8 o'clock. We have the um, ECAC Fortnite duo builds, which is going to be going down. It should be two, three games of action there. But we do also have ECAC Team Fight Tactics, mm -hmm. which will be going down at the same time. Get two rounds of that. We did get to actually see Tommy get W in his round last week. So let's see if we can find ourselves another one. No pressure. <laughs> but um, in the end, that will be our game day for the most part. I'm trying to think if anything else is there, but I think that is the gist of it. Oh. Nope. <laughs> nothing on that and that's what going to be our game day tomorrow looking very much to be working on that broadcast in the back where i belong in the director's seat so we're going to have a lot of action lined up for you guys tomorrow but as of right now happy valentine's day hope hey. you enjoyed from what i just got told from the back room i hate to cut you off oh yeah but before we do close things out here for today we didn't get to see the uh, the end of that last game, so why don't we talk to someone about it? We got ourselves so. a player interview coming up in just a moment's time. However, we kind of need time to set that up. So it'll be a very, very quick, short break to get everybody settled in. And we'll have ourselves a player interview, so don't go anywhere.
All right, Saints Nation, welcome back, and thank you for waiting here with a player interview with Priestley himself after a very, very well-fought matchup against Cumberland University. Now, fortunately, Priestley, we had a little bit of a tech issue when we had in that last quarter of the match or so, but we did hear you got the W. So around that 200-point mark there for yourselves, what did you have to do to close that one out? Um, they had the P4 rotation there. So, I mean, we knew going into this game, like Skid Row Hardpoint, you always have to win your P2s and P5s. If you win your P2s and P5s, then, like, you'll get most of the time, like, for sure, like, and you'll win the game. So, yeah, uh, we just rotated really early on P5, uh, and they, they didn't really have a chance of breaking it because that hill was, like, a, considered a money hill. So, gotcha. um, yeah, so it was pretty easy once we rotated, and, yeah, just finished out the game like that. Yeah, it was actually extremely close. That's one thing I'm going to quickly throw in here. So, normally when we talk about Nace Star League matchups, Let's be honest, y'all don't usually get challenged until we're talking like maybe the last couple of uh, playoff weeks, if anything. So how did, how did it feel to have like Cumberland keeping you as honest, to say the least, in that matchup? Yeah, this year's a lot more competitive because we have the NACE Super Conference. Yeah. So all the top schools from last year on a, a conference, Cumberland, Oklahoma Christian, SEU, us. So yeah, it's super competitive division. And like like you said, usually it's easy for NACE, our regular season at Normally, least. yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's actually really nice to play like top teams in the regular season because sometimes it gets boring playing mm -hmm. the I believe lower it. level teams like to say the, like to say that but yeah so i mean we love playing those games like it, it gets the blood flowing mm -hmm. so uh yeah i mean it's fun game we love playing the top teams no absolutely and then one thing is for um yourself personally of course uh, across not only our call of duty team Probably our entire program, if I really, really think about it, you've probably been on the longest, the most like senior person, of course, the entire program. Yep. Um, are there any goals that you have, anything that you want to try and accomplish before you uh, end up graduating? Um, I don't know if there's a specific goal, but I just want to, I just want to leave the team in a better place, you know, th than I started it. So I think we did that. I mean, the talent we have coming in every like semester now is obviously a lot better than it used to be we have super talented players like kb you know he just turned 18 he's he's really good to say the least so awesome yeah i mean just want to help those guys grow um obviously if they stick around you know a couple of those guys still have years left here so uh yeah i just want to help them as much as i can and uh yeah just be like a, a leader on the team 
Oh, absolutely. Heck, I remember back when it first started with uh, with you and Dawson and the gang, and I'm sitting there um, doing tournament organizing for a Smash class, and I see us in the other nest, and it's like, oh, how things have changed and how, like, how much progress you all have made, and it's, it's absolutely different. incredible to see. But one last thing I want to touch on, we kind of talked about NASA a little bit earlier, but the grand finals are in Orlando, Florida for, uh, for this semester. Yep. Um, what would it mean to you to be able to get there um, to the grand finals in, our, in Florida for your final, possibly final, competitive year? I mean, it'd mean a lot. I've been ooh, uh, maybe four or five NACE grand probably four NACE mm -hmm. grand finals I've been in. So I haven't won one yet. Maybe maybe this semester will be the one. So, I mean, yeah, I'd mean a lot, obviously, you know, getting to go to Florida to compete. It's always, I mean, get, like being able to travel to compete is obviously a, always a really good experience. So, yeah, I'd mean a lot, and especially because, you know, like I said, this is a, a super talented NACE uh, conference this year. So if we didn't make it there, that means we'd, we'd beat some pretty good teams on the way. So it'd mean a lot. Absolutely. That'd be quite the... Uh quite the accomplishment to, excuse me, accomplishment to send things off on. But um, before we do end up closing out for today, I just do want to give you the opportunity. Um, is there anybody you want to shout out or um, any final thoughts before we close out today? Yeah, I'd like to shout out my team, obviously, first and foremost, uh, the coaches, Aaron and Frank. Uh, and yeah, I mean, we're, we're going to hopefully keep going up from here. Um, it's a good start. I mean, we'll take it, but we still have, we still have a lot to work on. And uh, yeah, we'll just keep working, keep grinding and hopefully uh, have good results for this semester. Absolutely, and awesome job. And that's an unless here today. Again, congratulations with your victory today. We will absolutely see more Varsity Call of Duty action uh, during next week's game days and maybe a little bit sooner if everything lines up correctly. But we will be closing out for today. Once again, thank you, Priestley, for tuning in. Thank you, everybody at home and in the Nexus tuning in to the matchups today. We will see you tomorrow at 7 p.m. Game day starts once again with some Rainbow Six Siege, TFT, and Fortnite. But for now, have a great night.